Hey, let's uh, now that we're back, let's see if uh, Tony Stewart will give us a shout here. Let's get a, let's see if we can get him on the radio. Hey, Smoke, it's DW. You got a copy? Yes, sir. Hey, buddy, in your favorite car, you at your favorite track. You won here the last time we were here. What uh, what can we expect today? I'm pretty excited about it. I'm, I'm most excited to see the sunshine out here and get some heat in this racetrack, so uh, it'll give up a little bit of grip here. But, you know, the big thing yesterday in happy hours, Zippy and the guys in this Home Depot car did a really good job of getting a good balance and, uh, you know, at the same time making it real adjustable. So no matter whether we get tight or loose, we got room to go either way today. Yeah, you think you can uh, end that Hen Hendrick dominance today? I hope so. I think uh, all of us are trying to figure out how we can do that. So uh, that's the goal. I mean, we'll see what happens. But, uh, you know, definitely feel like we got a shot, but we'll know in 500 miles. Well, you look good sitting up in there. like your helmet. You look like you're comfortable. Uh, hammer down, bud. All right, man, we'll try. Tony Stewart rolls off ninth today. Let's get late breaking stories from Pit Road, beginning with Steve Burns. Yeah, thanks, Mike. In just 10 years, this race has skyrocketed in terms of prestige and popularity. 200,000 fans from 46 states are here to watch this event. 500 media members are here to see which one of 43 drivers will win this event worth $7.2 million, the third richest purse of the year. Dick Bergren. The weekend started out on a high note for Kyle Busch. He won the first practice, but in the second, it all went wrong as he backed the car into the fence. That meant he had to pull out a backup car. He will start in the back of the field, but races have twice won from backups in the back of the field. Matt Yoakum. Clint Boyer trying to pull a Jeff Burton, meaning score his first ever Nextel Cup victory right here at TMS. His crew chief, Guilford, put a lot of adjustability in his setup, knowing the temperatures today would be about 20 to 25 degrees hotter. He says, my only concern is just being too out of control. Krista. Tony Stewart and his team have been the class of the field all week, and what could they possibly have to worry about? That weather and that adjustability. That's exactly what the 20 team did. The team said the best car who guessed the best to the weather conditions. That's the team that's going to win this race. Let's go straight to our keys to the race. First one, anticipate track changes. You just heard Krista say, talking about guessing at what you need to start this race, plus changes on each and every one of these pit stops for 500 miles. Engine durability, 500 miles, about half the Chevrolet teams have that new engine package, the R07, that has not raced in a 500 mile race yet. And you know what, going back to the Bush race yesterday, you may want fresh tires, but don't pit too early because the old caution might burn you. Short pitting sometimes backfires. Warm day, potentially slick track. Practice in cold weather, no qualifying. It was rained out. We start by points. Gordon, Burton, 1-2 in the next hookup standings. They share the front row. Well, DW, 500 miles, 200 miles an hour off into the corner. It's going to be slick. Reach up there and pull those belts tight one more time. Just got to think real quick. The last time we started by points here in 1997, if I remember correctly, we didn't make the first turn. A lot of us didn't. And Jeff Burton, who starts on the outside pole, ended up winning. Huge crowd on hand, and here's the moment they've been waiting for. Boogity, boogity, boogity! Let's go racing, boys! Leader Jeff Gordon, he'll get those five trouble, points. trouble already off turn four. JJ Yaley, David Reagan, more cars to follow. Chain reaction, Ricky Rudd, Casey Mears. Oh, Rudd up on top of Reagan's car. Uh, what was that about? Last time I remember, I start by points here. Iceberg, <laughs> dead ahead. <laughs> Come on around. Show you what happened coming off turn number four. Watch the 18 and the six side by side, left of your screen. Oh, the six car just pushes up into Jay Lee in the 18, and uh, that started the whole mess. Then they come back out into the racetrack right here, and that's what created the rest of the problem. 
Here comes Rudd. Watch this thing back up on top of that six car. Ricky was trying to slow up Daryl and got turned around, got hit from behind and turned around. You know, I don't think it hurt Rudd's car much. Now watch J.J. Yaley coming from the right, the green car. Yeah, he's right back here. You'll see him coming off turn four. He gets a little bit loose, but I think that's because the six car had already made contact with him and got him sideways. And then these guys are all trying to woe up. Here comes Rudd and company. Johnny Sauter in the 70 had to go down through the grass. He was back there behind Ricky Rudd, but I think J.J. Yaley, the 18 car, he was as high on the racetrack as he could go. Yeah, Reagan just said uh, that there's not a lot of grip on the first couple of laps, and uh, Reagan just got it, got it back in the gas, pushed up into him. I know Rudd's car's got some damage, but I think it might be repairable. Let's watch from Johnny Sauter, who started 35th. Go inside, inside, way inside. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I like that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> okay, I think you're good, Johnny. But you're right, Daryl. They need to try to fix that 88 car. You heard Jeff Hammond in the pre-race talk about the guys at the back side of the top 35. He's fighting to stay in the top 35 to be locked in the show. David Reagan started the season top five in the Daytona 500. Things have not gone so well of late. Had a good race yesterday, but not today. NASCAR Next Up Cup Racing on Fox is sponsored by Chevy. The most wins in NASCAR history. An American Revolution. By Napa Auto Parts. Napa, get the good stuff. By McDonald's. And by Nextel, only from Sprint, helping NASCAR Nextel Cup fans get more done. David Reagan turns J.J. Yaley, and then Casey Mears gets into the back of Ricky Rudd. And all of those cars have varying degrees of damage. Uh, look way down right there. There is Yaley, and Reagan is to the inside of him as they come off turn number four. There's the initial collision, the one that sends both of those cars around. Now just coming into screen, you'll, here you'll see Ricky Rudd. Jeff Green ducks to the inside, and it was Casey Mears that got into the back of Rudd as everybody tried to woe up. That actually happened way on down here near the start-finish line, so uh, Casey was uh, still in the gas, looked like, when Ricky tried to slow down. Dick Bergeron? I'm with J.J. Yaley, who has been watching the replays on our monitor. Uh, was there any place you could have gone, anything you could have done to have avoided that? I guess got a better start, got away from the six. Uh, you know, I was down on the outside there. It's a really long race, and uh, to get taken out on the first lap is just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, you know, I couldn't get close to the wall, and, you know, I actually was tightened up out of the way, and, and I thought someone actually got into the six car, but, uh, you know, I guess uh, at some point you need to realize that the throttle, pinge, the throttle pedal hinges, and if you're pushing, if you're loose, whatever it is, that uh, if you lift off, you save a bunch of wrecked race cars. So a little stupidity on his part and uh, a bad day for the Interstate Batteries team. Massive damage on this car, Mike Joy. And this was a home game for Yaley's sponsor. I was sad to see him out of it. He came in here 18th in points. Now, Ryan Newman got a little bit of damage to the left nose of his number 12. Johnny Sauter, you saw his onboard view. Casey Mears had a little damage, too. Yeah. Uh, I think they've got it passed. There's, uh, there's Newman's car. They put the bear bond on it. It's probably better than it was. Very well could be. We're getting set for the restart, Here's completing car. six laps. Not a lot of damage, the one left front of his car, so those two cars seem to be okay. So caution at lap one, and Dave Rudd, Reagan. Rudd is back out there, and uh, he was up to speed as he caught up with the back of the field. Green flag. teammate that 48 car Jimmy Johnson he wants the lead of this race he could not run a fast lap yesterday in practice but his car was so good on long runs you know Larry you say that and I, I, I looked up to statistically and that 48 cars only led three laps here yeah three Hendrick laps. only actually has one win here with Terry Labonte back in like 1998 so he'd probably like to lead more than three laps unless of course the last three down to 168 miles an hour middle of the corner 
And now accelerating down the back stretch to Just near 200. Watch this right here. Throttle going off in the corner. I mean, he was not off of it. A second picked it right back up well before the center of the corner. Well, last couple of weeks, we've been running about 90 miles an hour, 100 miles an hour. And that's almost pit road speed here. Dale Jr. battling Clint Boyer there. Jamie McMurray in the midst of that battle. Looking back from Junior, they have cleared Boyer. And now McMurray and Stremme in pursuit. I think what we're seeing again this week is a product of the 48 and the 25 helping each other. And I don't mean right now on the racetrack. I mean in the pits, in the garage, preparing their cars for these races. Did you see Kyle Busch get loose? Did that look a lot like the car that he wrecked earlier this week? That's not the first time he's done that in these first few laps either. He's been pretty loose all the way around the racetrack. He only got the one final practice with that five car, but I know they were very happy with that car in that final practice. Just runs up on the back of Dave Blaney in that 22 so fast. You could see his car just wiggling as he was going through the bumps right there. But well, he's like a man possessed right yeah, now. He was trying to cut under Blaney, and uh, when he did, it just got a little loose with him. Jimmy Johnson has a run coming off turn two. Caught Jeff Gordon right in the middle of the corner and follows his tire tracks to three. How about the race leader, Steve? Well, Mike, as was pointed out on the pre-race show, Jeff Gordon has never won here at the Texas Motor Speedway in 12 tries. I talked to his crew chief, Steve Latart, this morning, and Steve said if you take an aerial view of this racetrack, none of the four turns are the same. And it's taken a long time for Jeff Gordon, even though he has a good finishing average, to get comfortable here. It seems like they compromise one end or one corner for the other, and they're trying to make him comfortable in all four turns here today. Tell you what, the guy on the move, I've been watching him through both ends of the racetrack. Carl Edwards in that 99 car. He's one of the 12 drivers that has a win here. Just drove into the eighth position. Now he Whoa. got him three wide. There's Kevin Harvick in that 29. He's got his hands full right now. He's been going backwards quickly. Larry, we saw the same thing with that car here last year. Got lapped early on and had a hard time making it up. I think he had to get the lucky dog a couple of times. He was 12th and has fallen back as Jamie McMurray holds off Kurt Busch. And, and, and Mike, just like I said in the opening, you got to go to your, back to your notebook. And if you wasn't good here last year, you might not be good here this year. Here's Busch on the bottom in a backup car. He's going to try it again. Not that time. Of course, if you're Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson, you got two notebooks to choose from. Well, and that's true, Daryl, of all these multi-car teams that run similar setups and share information. But, Darrell, you're right about looking at last year. Like we were talking yesterday, it was less than 50 degrees. Right now, it's pushing 70, which is exactly what the temperature was a year ago, 73 degrees when they dropped the green flag. I knew that, uh, Larry, you would know that better than probably anybody here. I had it in my briefcase. <laughs> Mark Martin is back. He's back behind the wheel of the Army car, and he's got a mirror full of his former teammate, Carl Edwards in the 99. Mark was awfully good in final practice yesterday in this Army car, and uh, we talked to him, and he, he sounded confident about what he's, what he's got here. And he's not raced since we were at Atlanta over a month ago, the last time we actually raced the current car. And you know what else? He's not irritated. He hadn't been to two short tracks and been bumped around, knocked around. He didn't have to drive the car tomorrow. <laughs> That's it. So he comes in here with a really nice attitude and outlook. Time for our first AT&T singular virtual crew chief question. Who do you think Dale Earnhardt Jr. will race for next year? To answer, text the word crew to 191 on your AT&T singular wireless phone. Singular is the new AT&T. Dale Earnhardt Incorporated. B is Richard Childress Racing. C is anybody else. This will be interesting. I got an opinion about that. Racing back at 10th place, David Stremme, who was strong here in opening practice, trying to close in. As Jeff Gordon has led every one of the 16 laps we've run so far in Texas. Jeff Gordon has stretched it out on his Hendrick Motorsports teammate, Jimmy Johnson, as you watch from the DLP. 
HDTV cam on board Tony Raines. Here's a look at Gordon, and here is the amount of his lead, which continues to grow. And you know, he was not happy at all with his car yesterday in practice. Our guys and girls in the garage area were reporting on that car. It was loose, it was pushing, it was doing everything but what it should do. Uh, what'll be interesting is if this car ever gets back in traffic, that's gonna be a telltale sign of how good of a car he's got. He's been in clean air the entire race so far. Yeah, that's been a problem they've had with that car sometimes is uh, it's good out front, but not so good back in traffic. But I gotta tell you, we watched the scoring monitor yesterday. We said, boy, Jeff Gordon's in trouble. But that's where having information from the past and having a good notebook and anticipating what this track's going to be like today makes all the difference in the world. Gordon has led every one of the 24 laps so far. We had a caution on lap one when David Reagan ran into J.J. Yaley. That also damaged the cars of Ricky Rudd, Casey Mears, Ryan Newman, and Johnny Sauter. Otherwise, we've been caution free. You know how I know that 24 car is really good? Because he smokes the tires every now and then. Oh. That means that baby is down. You know, we're not really surprised to see Juan Pablo Montoya running that good. Had a great race yesterday. Did they have a lug nut problem? But we always look at Texas like a sister track to Atlanta Motor Speedway. And, of course, we know how well he ran there. Same race car. Got his first top five finish there last month. Finished fifth in his 42 car. One car that is not having a good day in the early going is the Penzo Chevy of Kevin Harvick. He has drifted back from his 11th starting spot. Harvick is currently 17th, Matt. The shell car was extremely neutral in happy hour, Mike, but right now, Harvick is just fighting in extremely tight condition. In fact, Todd Barrier said, if we get a caution, we're gonna pull a spring rubber. But Kevin says, I just cannot believe how much of a difference a spring rubber would make. He goes, it must be the change in track temperature that we've seen over the course of the weekend. Yeah, and that's normally what happens, especially with the radial tire. If you've got one end, it's not sticking when the track is cool. Like, for instance, if the front end is not sticking, the car's pushing. When it heats up, it just sticks less. It's not like the car goes to loose or push. It almost just makes whatever end's not sticking worse. Now, you saw Martin Truex in the one put a hand out the window to try to point Harvick to the inside. But Harvick not quick enough to uh, make the pass. Yeah. They continue single file. He's pointing out to that side and he's shaking his head no. Huh? I think they want no part of that. I won't go there. Thank you very much. <laughs> Stremi in ninth place now with uh, Kurt Busch's Dodge in tow. Bush to the bottom. You know, we talked to him yesterday right before the Bush race after final practice. Again, as we saw on the pre-race show, this is a backup car. He had the crash on Friday. And where the front springs go, there's a, a bucket. And that bucket came out of the left lower control arm. That's what caused him to crash. But he was pretty happy with his race car. And, and this car runs right around the bottom right now, it looks like. Yeah, he's made some good progress. He's moving forward, going the right direction. Here, let's see uh, if we have a little bit of that smoke you talked of. Yeah. Off of Jeff Gordon's car. And, and this is one of the things that I kind of watched the old 24 car. The reason being is because that's the coil bind setup. And he, Jeff, wasn't comfortable with this car. Watch this thing. It'll take us, it'll just fall down on the right front. You see that little smoke coming out of there? That thing is just rolling over, falling down on that right front. The right front's rubbing up in the fender, and that takes some getting used to. That's a driver thing where that thing falls over all at once. You say, oh, I'm wrecking. But it didn't. It's just taking a set, and you got to adjust your driving style. That's why they had a lot of trouble, a lot of trouble on the mile and a half until he was able to adjust to this. And that coil bind setup is where the front springs are very soft, and the car goes down in the corner. It just sits on those front springs and just stays down there, keeps that nose down in the racetrack. Well, Gordon's lead is shrinking. That's because we have a new second place car. Jeff Burton has passed Jimmy Johnson for second. Burton, who got his very first Next Up Cup win here in the inaugural race in 1997. As fast as you go here and as hot and slick as this racetrack, Darrell, you said it in the pre-race, it's a thinking man's race, and we know that man is a thinking man. And what did his teammate tell us yesterday? What did Clint Boyer tell us? He's driving, talking about Jeff Burton, that car, as hard as he can every single lap. Yeah, he said he's putting it all out there. Every time he goes out around the racetrack, he's putting it all out there. Now look what's happened to Tony Stewart at the bottom of your screen. He's gone from seventh 
back to 12th place where he currently runs. Krista? Tony Stewart has his hands full right now. Back on lap 25, he came on the radio and said, my car is a pile of junk. It's all I've got. He's been searching the track, looking for different lines. He said, if I get off the bottom, I am dead tight, tight center to exit. How do you fix that, Larry? Well, I mean, they're going to have to get very aggressive with their adjustments when they come to pit road, just like we talked about. I'm sure there's going to be wedge taken out. There's going to be some serious air pressure changes. And you can see just how far to the how far to the left he's having to turn the steering wheel. And that just tells you that he's putting way more wheel into the car than he wants to, and the car's not turning for him. When you see that left hand or that right hand go over the top like that, that means you've got a lot of steering input. And the only thing Tony Stewart can do right now is roll out of the throttle. It almost won't turn with that steering wheel. He has to slow the speed of the car down. That's exactly right, Larry. That's what good drivers do. They adjust to what the car is doing. And it really shows on the watch. Stewart's lap times, 29 and a half seconds, while Jeff Gordon goes around here in 28.9. Six tenths of a second difference. That's, That's a lot. That's huge. Of course, if Tony's car is bad, I don't know what that means about McMurray, because Tony has caught him and trying to pass him. But just as we anticipated, we just saw Jamie McMurray in that 26 car moving up to the top of the racetrack. We already have at least three grooves of racing here just shortly into this race. And you saw the 20 car wiggle as it exited the corner. That's again because you've got the wheels turned, the front wheels turned hard left. And when they finally get a little bite, the back end wants to snap out. And when you have to roll out of the throttle on the exit of the corner, it just kills that entire straightaway speed. Jeff Gordon, your leader, Jeff Burton, Jimmy Johnson, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. just rocketed past Denny Hamlin, used a lap car as a pick, and moved up into fourth place. I'm sitting in a hot rod today. Jeff Gordon's still your leader, but look, he's got company. Jeff Burton is now right on his bumper as Gordon negotiates heavy traffic. While we were away, Bobby Labonte made an unscheduled stop for overheating, and Kenny Wallace came to pit road, put the hood up, and they have pushed his furniture row racing machine to the garage. Doesn't surprise me that a lot of guys got a smoke down the back over there. Mike Bliss oh. in the 49 car, hard licked to the front. Racing for the Paralyzed Veterans of America, one of a number of charity initiatives this weekend here at the track. PVA.org and let's see what happened to Mike Bliss. Look way up the top of your screen. My car just snapped around. It looked like it did, and that's not unusual for this place. Uh, I'm not sure if one of the red if one of the Red Bull cars, I don't think they made contact. I think Mike oh. just got loose coming off two over there and uh, the thing snapped around on him. Vickers in the 83 car was right behind him, but let me tell you who that really benefits. Of course, I still think they're in huge trouble. All three Everham cars were just about to go a lap down the 9, the 19, and the 10. Yep. Organization that just dominated the mile and a half racetracks last year. And Sterling had just gotten left. He gets the lucky dog. And I talked to him this morning. He said, DW, we changed everything on the car with the steering wheel. <laughs> well, it's going to be feeding time on pit road because I'm sure you're going to see here 44 laps in there. We were about 10 laps away from what would have been green flag stops. You see Mike Bliss out of his 49 car, but everybody will be to pit road four tires and adjustments. So let's head there to Dick Bergeron. And Matt Kenseth started this race in the fourth position, Mike, dropped back to the seventh spot. The problem is the car has got a good bit of a push to it, and he has asked for several adjustments to be made to the car on this pit stop. Crew standing by, ready to do those adjustments. It's a great car. It's the same car that Kenseth won the California race with. He was third in it in Atlanta, fourth in it at Vegas, and here he is. Kurt Busch. Kurt Busch started 17th. He is up to 6th. He is one of the fastest cars out here, and that is why they are making no adjustments on this stop. Four tires only. Matt. Burton and Johnson hit pit road in second and third. Johnson calling for a track bar adjustment. His car needed more help in the forward bite area. So did Burton. Just a slight air pressure adjustment for the 31, Steve. Matt, adjustments for Dale Earnhardt Jr. as he exits pit road and Jeff Gordon. Gordon said his car had gone from tight in the middle to tight off. Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s car, he said, it's rolling over on the right rear too heavy. 
I tell you what, guys, the real winner on this battle on pit road, though, that 17 car, Robbie Riser, you see, gained two positions. He was in his pit box, almost completed with his pit stop before some of the competitors even got to their box. The front four come out the way they went in as we work the second caution flag of the day. First Elliott Sadler and now the number seven of Robbie Gordon have stayed out on track to lead a lap under this caution period. Gordon who wrecked a car earlier this weekend is the present leader. Yesterday Justin Hutchinson of Springfield Missouri got a brand new Chevy Silverado and look who's making the delivery. What's up, man? How you doing, man? Hey, how are you? Very good, very good. Ready to give you a brand new uh, Chevy Silverado. Oh, man, I can't wait. <laughs> can't wait. Yeah, you want to hop in? Yeah, take off. Not only did Justin win a new truck, Junior took him for a ride around the track to break it in. Dale Junior signed the dash. Junior has a Silverado of his own and left his mark on the truck, and Justin gets to bring the 2007 Motor Trend Truck of the Year home to Missouri. Congratulations. You know, Mike, let's explain why Robbie Gordon would stay out to lead a lap. Why Elliott Sadler would stay out to lead a lap. We talked about it earlier when Jeff Gordon led that first lap. When you lead a lap in a race, not for every lap, a lap, it's five bonus points. And we know those five bonus points could be so important. Staying in the top 35, getting to the top 12. A lot of reasons those five points could be critical even here on race number seven. Remember, 12 make the chase for the next Dell Cup. Elliott Sadler 13th in points, so all those bonus points are important. Next week, Fox coverage of next Dell Cup racing continues at Phoenix in prime time, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 Pacific on Saturday. Then, Sunday, April 29th, Talladega. The biggest, deepest speedway coverage begins at 1.30 Eastern, and then Saturday, May 5th. A night race at Richmond on the three quarter mile beginning at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Coverage of NASCAR continues in high definition on Fox. Here's our singular virtual crew chief answer. Where will Dale Jr. race next year? You said Dale Earnhardt Incorporated, 60%. I would have had another one. They should have had another other team. Maybe should have been his own team. Oh. JR Motorsports. Text your virtual crew chief question. And maybe you'll see it show up on one of our Fox telecasts. Getting set to go back to green here. Next time by, 49 laps complete. At Texas Motor Speedway, Jeff Gordon has led 47 of those. All except for the two led by Elliott Sadler and Robbie Gordon under this caution. Well, he's talking about bonus points. Uh, Jeff Gordon's got 30 bonus points already this year. He and Matt Kenseth have got the most. They both have 30. Are pretty darn important. Let's get an update on Kenseth, Dick Bergman. Well, he's going to restart in the fifth position, Mike, but the most important news is that Robbie Reiser has radioed his driver and told him the tires look excellent, perfect. And he said after looking at their notebooks, they're confident that they made the adjustments in the correct direction. Here comes Kenseth. <laughs> Thanks, Boy, the, he came yesterday, too. He uh, spun out. All, I, I don't know how he kept from wrecking his car yesterday. Spun that bad boy out, saved it, got tires on it, marched back through the field. And won an exciting race yesterday over Denny Hamlin. Hey, talking about Dale Earnhardt Jr., though, Daryl and Mike, I've been watching him. Remember, he started back in the 12th position. He's up into the fourth. And the biggest thing, he had moved all the way to the top of the racetrack at both ends. Take a look at the scoreboard here. They do a lot of neat different things in Texas. They not only tell you how many laps have been completed in the race, they also tell you how many laps to go. I like it. Texas is the home of Texas Instruments that provides us with our DLP HDTV ultimate picture cam suspended on cables above the speedway. And that's how you see this restart. You know, with that information, I, that's what a driver wants to know. You never ask how many laps have we run. You always ask how many laps do we have to go. So I think from a driver's perspective, looking at the scoreboard, and we do, fans like to know that too. 
Well, that's why we also show it to you uh, at the top of our screen up there on the rundown, because every racetrack seemingly has a different number of laps in its race. It's not consistent week to week. What is consistent is Jeff Burton. That car has been strong all day, and he is just gnawing away at the rear bumper of Jeff Gordon for the lead. Meanwhile, back at the pass. Oh, that's a mini wad right there. Tight, tight pack. Steve Burns. Mike, Larry McReynolds was just talking about the line that Dale Rock Jr. was running around the high side. Carl Edwards restarted this race, or restarted in the 10th position. He likes his car, but so far hasn't found a good place to run. So his crew chief, Bob Osborne, has been telling him that the 26, the 17, and the number 8 are running the high side, while other cars are running the bottom. So Carl's trying to find a good spot to run. Matt? Under caution, Jeff Burton told his team that it was just starting to get exciting when the caution came out. He says the car balance-wise had really shifted. Even though they were about 10 laps shy when they would have pitted, his team told him, your tires look good, because they did show somewhere on that outside shoulder of the right front during practice. Thanks, Matt. You're watching on the right, Denny Hamlin looking back at Carl Edwards and Tony Stewart. That is ninth place on back. Just watching Jeff Burton here in the 31 car behind Jeff Gordon in the 24. Remember, Jeff Burton comes in here second in the points. So what he would love to do is get up there. We've been talking about these bonus points. He'd love to get five points for leading a lap in this race if he can get to Jeff Gordon. In fact, right now, first, second, third, or first, second, third in the next Dell Cup points chase. The front four exited the pitch the way they came in. And <laughs> look at this, Martin Truex threading the needle between Montoya and Boyer, making the pass. <laughs> I talked to Juan Pablo Montoya this morning. He said, you know, the interesting thing when he listens to a spotter, when he says two wide, he goes, okay. When he hears three wide, he goes, oh. When he hears four he wide, he goes, he goes, oh, no, four wide. <laughs> <laughs> He is, he is an interesting guy to talk to, Juan Pablo Montoya. He's funny. He's really funny. I think, did somebody get against the wall? Yeah, I think that was Clint Boyer in the 07. Matt? Mike, that's exactly who it was. Boyer said the car just will not turn at all. That was his complaint before the pit stop. They made an air pressure and a chassis adjustment to try to fix that. It hasn't helped. You can see now he's running the middle, just trying to hold on, losing another position. About to get back to the bottom now. After this 13, to be a hole. Let's show you what happened. Watch the black 07. And again, it's just exit of these corners. The cars just kind of lose grip all at once, and that's the result right there. And that's exactly what happened to the six car, David Reagan, at the very first of the race when he lost grip on the exit. Tony Stewart on the outside of McMurray. This is for eighth place. I would say that Mr. Stewart got his car fixed. Well, you heard Chris DeVoter talking about he told Greg Zipidelli and his crew, my car is junk. And he knew they were going to have to make major adjustments on that car. They went to the right way. They went the right way because he's passed Carl Edwards, Denny Hamlin, uh, McMurray. He's passed all those guys in the last two or three laps and moving on. Another driver on the move is Greg Biffle. His number 16 has gone around Mark Martin and climbed up to 12th place. Just behind this group. Yeah, Greg started back in the 21st position and a lot like Casey Kane last year, two or three years ago, Greg Biffle pretty much owned. We got another Cardinal. car that was almost Kyle up Petty, the wall. Who had just made a pit stop, came out and did he hit the wall in four? It looked like he did. Uh, he, or he did the same thing earlier, like he had a flat tire. I think he's got something broken on the right front because he went off in the corner down in one and two, shot up the hill. He came to pit road. They worked on it or put tires on it. He went right back out and did the same. I believe he has something broken on the right front. Yeah, he's just trying to ride around on the apron and make it back to pit road. Right now he's over at turn two. No caution. We stay green. Jeff Gordon's lead now one second over Jeff Burton. Gordon has stretched it out a bit again, and Stewart keeps coming. He's battling David Stremme for seven. Gordon's car, I like the way his car is running because he starts off uh, pretty fast, and he actually seems like he gets faster uh, as he goes into a run. There's the gap. 
one two three Jimmy Johnson in third and Dale Earnhardt Jr. in fourth. We see Carl Edwards in the 99 car. We just had talked about him. He's ran in the middle of the racetrack right there. Goes by Dale Jarrett in the 44 car, trying to get to his teammate McMurray in the 26. And Daryl, going back to Tony Stewart, you know, he, we talked to him there before the race. He said he's glad to see the sun out. Well, I just got the report that the track temperature keeps going up. It's over 100 degrees now to 102. See how hard he's driving. Driving pretty hard. That's how he got his name right there, guys. Smoking, Smoking on the tires. Kyle Petty has taken his car to the garage. We also need to mention before that last caution, Kenny Wallace in the 78 car made it to pit road. They had to hood up and they did put his car to the garage as well. Good day for Kurt Busch, considering how he started the weekend, backing into the wall or hitting the wall with the right front and destroying the primary car. Christy, he's up to sixth place. And it's also a very good day for a man named Troy Raker. Now, Troy usually sits up on the pit box, but it's in the engineer's chair. Now he is the crew chief, filling in for Roy McCauley, who is taking some personal time off to be with his wife, Amy, as she battles leukemia. The entire team sends their best wishes to Roy, who, of course, is at home watching. Troy said, you know, I just have to get a little bit better at talking on the radio. I always have opinions. I don't usually voice them live time to the driver. He's not talking much now, but he said if Kirk continues to drive well, he may pull out the aviator shades halfway through the race. Something to look forward to. We'll keep you posted on that. Boy, that would be a real pleasure to work with a crew chief that had opinions but didn't want to voice them. That'd be a <laughs> pleasant change. Jeff Burton gives way to Jimmy Johnson. That's second place. Well, Jeff knows we're, we're not even a fourth of the way through this race. He saw the 48 car Jimmy Johnson catch him. Why sit here and battling knowing how much further we have to go? And there he yielded to Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the eight car as well. So he moves back to fourth. Yeah, but his, well, his lap times, Larry, have fallen off now. Yeah, he's Three tenths of a second slower than the leader. That's not the danger zone, but that's not encouraging no, either. He, he was really good on those four new tires, but looks like when the goodie comes off of them, he starts sliding back. How about it, Matt? DW came on the radio and said, my car is just too free, lacking forward bite. I'm just going to let some other guys get out front and leave for a while and ride till they can fix this car on their next stop. Well, you know, being a little bit loose on the start of a run is good. It makes you really fast, but uh, it's got to go away for you to stay fast. Apparently that time it didn't go away for him, so they're going to have to tighten her up a little. You know, I look at this pack right here, a car I've been watching, and I noticed him yesterday uh, in final practice. David Gilliland in the 38 car started back there in the 30th position. He has now moved up into the top 15 up there in the 14th position. And that crew this morning, they said, you know what? We're not going to change this race car. We're going to do it with air pressure. We were too good yesterday. We just do not want to mess with it. And it's paying off. Isn't that the same kind of car crew combination that won this race with Elliott Sadler? Pretty much for the most part a couple of years ago. Denny Hamlin, car doesn't sound good. He's fallen back into the clutches of Greg Biffle. Matt? Oh, he's got trouble. Hey, Mike, the problem with Denny Hamlin, just moments ago, he told Mike Ford and his crew that he had a vibration. You see his hand out the window net. They are coming to pit road under green. The vibration has gotten worse on the 11 car for Denny Hamlin. Hamlin came in here seventh in next till cup points. More tires and fuel. Heard Mike Ford, his crew chief, tell him we're going to go ahead and change four tires. The anticipation that possibly a wheel out of balance, something of that nature right there. And what they need, they need this race to stay green to cycle through some green flag pit stops. That might have been the, that might be the problem, but it, it sounded funny to me. Um, and that is one of the new Chevrolet engines. So uh, I'll keep an eye on that. Yeah, all of the Joe Gibbs teams, Tony Stewart, J.J. Yaley, who's basically out of the race. Denny Hamlin, they come in here with this new RL7 engine, and in simple form, it's just a little better across the board for the Chevrolet teams, and a lot of internal differences. Look at Jeff Gordon's lead. The teammate Jimmy Johnson now second by 2.4 seconds. Dale Earnhardt Jr., another second back. Here's your leader. 
And here's one Pablo Montoya battling. Martin Truex taking the long way around. You know, Daryl, going back to talk about that R07 engine, and we certainly do not know that that's a problem right now with the 11 car, but the one thing I've questioned all weekend is why you would bring it for the very first time to a racetrack like Texas, 500 miles. It's very, very hard on engines with a sustained RPM. Why would you not try it somewhere else first? You know why? It must be a whole lot better on the dyno. <laughs> and the practice sheets have been showing that with the Joe Gibbs car. Yeah. You got to run it somewhere. Might as well start here at Texas, 500 mile race, see how good it is. But I got to believe when they dyno them, they said, whoa, we can't leave this at home. Brian Vickers right now the leading Toyota in the race. Dave Blaney two spots back and Dale Jarrett back at 34. Two Ganassi cars Montoya and Sorensen nose to tail as they work on Dale Jarrett. 72 laps complete in the Samsung 500 at Texas Motor Speedway 262 to go. Jeff Gordon pretty firmly in command. From the Great American Speedway, America's Grand Game returning to Fox Yankees Red Sox for either their rivalry or Cubs Cardinals. Check for a game in your area. Note the time, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific, Saturday. It's Major League Baseball on Fox. And we welcome you back here. Jeff Gordon has dominated, leading all but two laps in this race. This is the most laps he's ever led in a Texas race. In case you joined us a little bit late, opening lap coming out of turn four. Watch, we highlighted the rookie David Reagan of the six car into J.J. Yaley, creating a spill, as Darrell Waldrop had said moments before. Not a lot of grip on the track early. Watch, Ricky Rudd flipping up into the air. All the drivers were okay. Yaley and Reagan, their cars out of this race. And as we come back to Jeff Gordon, the points leader coming in, but he's yet to win a race this year. And Jeff, this is one of three tracks, Miami and Phoenix, where he's never won. And Steve Burns reported earlier about how the he was uncomfortable at this racetrack. Uncomfortable is not a really uh, a way to put it. He doesn't like this racetrack. Steve Letarte told me this morning that they actually came here with a race car that he had won in before, had run and led a lot of laps at Las Vegas in, so they could try to eliminate the excuses. And that was another reason why they came with the, you know, the uh, engine of the day rather than the R07 engine that Chevrolet had available because they wanted to try to keep things as simple as possible, and they were working on a setup that they hoped would make Jeff happy. And right now, it looked like they hit the right setup, and the momentum that they've had carried all year long is really starting to you know, kind of click for these guys. And he just told me today, Steve Letarte right there on the right. If they could come out here with a top 10 finish, they'd feel like they'd won the race. All right, and of course, the dad to be in July, his wife Ingrid, pregnant with a baby girl. The last time, the only time a pole sitter has won this Texas event, Casey Kane, a guy who you said critical race for him coming in. The Everham Dodgers having trouble. Kane currently running 27th, Sadler 26. Yeah, they're, they're struggling right now. And I really thought this weekend off would give these guys a chance to regroup, come back here to a racetrack where they had some success. Both of these drivers have won here before, but early on, all Three of Everham's cars are struggling at this point, and I think they're again, they've got to make some wholesale changes if they expect to get up in the hunt, not only for the chase for the championship, to get back where they can win races. Jamie McMurray, 12th in points, coming in, battling Mark Martin, of course, who's back in this race after taking a two race break. Let's turn it back upstairs to Daryl, Larry, and Mike. Fastest car on the track just went through this pack that we see right there, led by uh, Mark Martin, and that's Martin Truex Jr. He's up in 11th position after starting 24th today. And uh, there's his Chevy headed for the front. Talk to his crew chief, Kevin Mannion. They were pretty excited. They've been fast all week long. This is the car that he finished second with at Homestead Miami Speedway in November. So they've been, they've been fast ever since they unloaded on Friday. Past Ricky Rudd's car that was so heavily damaged in the lap one crash, but continues to run. Now Denny Hamlin is also running lap times equal to Truex's after an unscheduled pit stop. And here's what happened. We did get the report while we were at break. He did have a left rear wheel that was loose. But now the problem is he is a lap and three quarters down right now. He's about six and a half seconds in front of Jeff Gordon, who's leading the race. As I said, Denny Hamlin needs this thing to run at least about 15 to 20 more laps because then all of our leaders would be to pit road for a green flag stop. He needs it to go that far without a caution. He's going to be okay. And I tell you why, Jeff Gordon has slowed down quite a bit the last several laps. His lap times have really taken a dive. A lot of it because he's in lapping a lot of good race cars right now, or a lot of race cars. Uh, and he has really lost about two or three tenths a lap here over the last five laps. 
You know, I want to follow up on something that Chris Meyer just mentioned about Jeff Gordon. He mentioned that Phoenix, Homestead, and Texas are the only tracks on the circuit that Jeff has not won. Jeff has actually won at Phoenix and Homestead in a Bush Series race, but he has not won anything at Texas Motor Speedway. Yet. Yet. This right here, you guys hear me? Yeah, we got you. I can tell you, nobody didn't hear me in that other radio. I switched over. Tell me where Jimmy's running, because I'm getting real tight. And I think that oh, he's answers. He's running the same line you are, identical. Why he has slowed down, but it also sounds like he was having some radio problems. The good news is, like a lot of systems in the car, they have a backup radio that the driver can flip to. Let's get to one of the other Hendrick cars, Kyle Busch, who also crashed during practice, currently running in 14th, Dick. Yeah, and as a result of that crash, Mike, he had to start all the way in the rear of the field in this backup car. The game plan for today, according to crew chief Alan Gustafson, base hits all day long. No attempt at home runs. Just pick and choose the spots as you get them. The car has not been perfect by any stretch of the imagination. His most recent transmission was it needs more grip in the center and more front grip throughout the corners. But the car is good enough that he has passed more than half of the field in his march to the front. And remember 2005 when Greg Biffle in a backup car started dead last, worked his way to the front, and when the checkered flag fell, Biffle won. Maybe Bush could repeat. Well, base hits, that may be a tall task. I've been wondering who would be the next Buddy Baker. Flat out or half turned over? Kyle Bush is it. No, he's uh, he's always wide open. I right. Sure had all, just like Baker always was. But Jeff Gordon was wanting to know where Jimmy Johnson was running. In about five more laps, he'll be able to tell where he's running. <laughs> he'll be able to watch him. He'll be right? able to watch him. <laughs> <laughs> Through the windshield, not the rearview mirror. That's right. He won't have to ask here in a few more laps. But you're right about you're right about Kyle. He leaves nothing. He hangs it all out all the time. Whole new meaning to loose. And Jeff fast. Gordon leads by one second. He leads Jimmy Johnson. Funny how things in the pre-race come back to us during the show. Like the two Hendrick teammates up front and somebody lurking right behind them. <laughs> hmm. Today's race on Fox is sponsored by the new Ford Super Duty, built to work harder for you. By DLP, HDTV powered by DLP, it's amazing, it's the mirrors. By DirecTV, just say ride shotgun on race day with NASCAR Hot Pass only on DirecTV. And by Applebee's Neighborhood Grill and Bar, eating good in the neighborhood. Today's DLP amazing moment when Elliot Sather beat Casey Kane here by 0 .03 seconds in 2004 for his second career win. Kurt Busch has already been in. Matt Kenseth is in now. Dick? Well, indeed, Mike. The changes that they made in the last pit stop that they thought were going to be so good didn't work out so well. Car has a bit of a push, but most important, the crew is up to full strong with Russ Strutt, the veteran Jack Band, back today after the surgery. All Steve. Right, Go ahead, Steve. Jeff Gordon on pit road in the 24. You heard him say a few moments ago that his car had been tight. Specifically, his car is tight from the center of the corner off. Matt to the 48. Jimmy Johnson says his car just a tick to the tight side. Although balance wise, it wasn't bad. He just had to put some wheel into it, needing a little more grip. Let's go back up pit road to Steve Burns. Matt, they made a, an air pressure adjustment, some tires for Jeff Gordon, also made a slight wedge adjustment. He's off pit road. Jamie McMurray has made a stop. Sterling Marlin, Tony Raines, Dave Blaney, Greg Biffle, Kevin Harvick. Let's go to the 26 pit. Jamie McMurray off pit road, right side tires on. They come around to the left side of the car. Krista. Tony Stewart is tight on entry and tight in the center of the turns, but the big thing he got on the radio and said, the car is not terrible. <laughs> well, that's an improvement. That's good. <laughs> what do we always say, Larry? Can you just tell me one thing you like about this? <laughs> do you car? like anything? The anything. seat, the color? <laughs> it is his favorite color. It's orange. At Dale Earnhardt Jr., the eight car, he, he led a lap there, got his five points. He's on pit road as well as Jeff Burton in the 31 car. Matt? 
Hurd, who faded back to four due to his car being just a, too loose for him to get up there and race with the leaders, just trying to be patient. Scott Miller calling for an air pressure change on both right side tires for the former winner here in Texas. He's away. Dale Earnhardt Jr. said his car had gotten pretty good on that run. He just needed help in turn three. He said he was tight getting in there, so they took some air pressure out of that right front tire on that number eight Chevrolet. Brian Vickers leads a lap. As we cycle through green flag pit stops, Paul Menard in the pit lane, Dale Jarrett, Johnny Sauter, who's had a strong race after a difficult practice. As Vickers is the leader, there's Jeff Green's pit stop. We're only about two or three cars from cycling through what was all scheduled green flag stops. Kyle Petty is back in the race after spending 40 laps in the garage. And here's Vickers with the field set by points. His teammate A.J. Allmendinger had to sit this one out. But here's the first Toyota driver to score a top 10 finish this and, season. And Mike Cal, Brian Vickers got in this show. He was not high enough in the owner points, but one of the criteria when you have a rain out, it goes back and gets any race winners from the previous year. Brian Vickers won Talladega. That's how he's in this race. And finally, he comes in to make his stop. So that will complete the cycle and put Jeff Gordon back into the lead over Jimmy Johnson, Jeff Burton, Dale Earnhardt Jr., and Kurt Busch. Tony Stewart, Matt Kenseth. And I believe this may put Denny Hamlin back on the lead lap since he's out of cycle with the rest of the leaders now, on stops. The 24 and the 48 came out of the pits together. As a matter of fact, I think the 48 actually gained a little time on him uh, in the pits on, on Jeff Gordon. But when I watch him go around the racetrack now, uh, there's a there's almost two seconds difference between Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson. You see them exit pit road right there almost together. But boy, there's Jeff going in the middle of three and four. And where is Jimmy way back here just now in the middle of three and four? Somewhere along the way, Jimmy lost a lot of time. Didn't see if that was a difference in getting up to speed, Daryl, or maybe a difference in working race traffic. Matt? Mike, that's one issue that Jimmy's been trying to fix all weekend long. He said when he looked back to last fall, he noticed that his car took a little while for the good to come in. He needed the front end of the run to work a little better than it did. They were trying to fix that this weekend. They couldn't quite do it. He says at about lap six on on the run, his car really comes in, but he does give up a little bit of time in those first five or six laps after a stop. And we just had mentioned Denny Hamlin there. You just saw him in the 11 car, and he had to come to pit road basically about 34 laps ago on lap 70 with a loose left rear tire. It looks like Mike Ford has elected to keep him on sequence with the leaders, but I'm not so sure that I wouldn't have went a little ways just to see if I could get a caution and stay on the lead lap. I know you don't want to give a lot of time up, but maybe just a few laps. I agree, Larry, because this is now going to put Hamlin nearly two laps down. Having made the stop, here comes Gordon up to lap him for a second time. Perhaps with the fresh tires, Hamlin will be able to stay out in front of the race leader. We'll find out when we come back. I'm telling you right now, it's a gym in the desert under the lights. When they drop the green flag, the fireworks will be going off. Holy cow, is that a car around down here? Big Brad, bunch of good cars. The nighttime is the right time to be good here. Come on, bring her down, bring her down. Kevin Harvick for the first time since Bristol is a winner. Back to back, what a weekend for that guy. It's Saturday night, we're under the lights. Next Saturday night, prime time in the desert in Phoenix. Jeff Gordon continues to lead. We stay green, but Ryan Newman slapped the wall coming off turn two and has come to pit road. Right rear is uh, down. That's what's wrong with him. Krista? Yeah, a flat tire for the 12, and this is coming after more bad luck. On the earlier stop, they had a broken jack problem. Now a flat tire. They also have a tire rolling out of the pit box. Not sure if that's going to be a problem or not. Also, uh, while we were away, Paul Menard brushed the wall coming off turn four, but continued without incident. Remember, Ryan Newman was involved in that wreck back on lap one. That's the reason it has all that bear bond and that tape on the nose. They've been back out there running, uh, but, but struggling a little bit since they dropped the green flag. 
You know, saw Bobby Allison next door in Bruton's uh, suite. Good to see him, and it jogged my memory that we got a proud papa standing next to us. Brandon McReynolds drove his Allison legacy car last night at Dillon, South Carolina, to win the pole and lead all but two laps and win the race. Atta boy. Oh, thank you, Mike. Yeah, I mean, it's just phenomenal. Sean and Adam and Mom, Linda, and Kendall, they were down there, and I was in the motor coach bouncing off the ceiling, the wall, <laughs> in both. But, yeah, it's always neat to see him get that first win. Great racetrack down there at Dillon. Ron Barfield and those guys have put together. So that's what I heard in the motor coach. Probably about 1130. Yeah, that's what I thought. I said, I was going out and looking for those race fans that raising all that cane out there. <laughs> it was me. That race fan was Larry. <laughs> we are 114 laps into this race. 20 to go. Reed Sorensen with Carl Edwards and with Kyle Busch. And now caution has come on the speedway. Boy, look at that 12 car. It looks like a big chunk of the tire is gone. Yeah, debris in turn two is the reason for the caution. That is the tire that came off Ryan Newman's car. That's concerning right there. It's on the shoulder. It looks like the tire came apart. You can see the Goodyear engineer right there looking at it, but I tell you, that caution is a huge advantage for Jamie McMurray, Mark Martin, Montoya. They were just about to go a lap down to our leader, Jeff Gordon. Yesterday in the Bush race, Matt Kenseth had the very same thing happen to his right rear tire. So the caution erases. Jimmy, uh, Jeff Gordon's four second lead over Jimmy Johnson and nine seconds ahead of Jeff Burton. I lied about my Dale age. Jr. <laughs> Kurt Busch. The top five. And the free pass will go to Brian Vickers, who was the first car one lap down. Steve. Listening to Jeff Gordon right now talk on his radio, he said his car is really good, just a little bit tight, which is an improvement when he was saying it was real tight earlier. He's got a good race car. They'll make a small air pressure adjustment. Matt? Over my shoulder, Chad Canales is debriefing his driver, Jimmy Johnson, over how his car reacted to the changes they made in the last stop. At this juncture, talking about possibly pulling a spring rubber and maybe another air pressure adjustment, he says the car just feels like it wanders too much. Krista? Kurt Busch and his team deciding what they're going to do. They have not made any adjustments thus far. They will be making adjustments, a track bar adjustment. He is faster than all the cars, but he is suffering for it. Poor fuel mileage right now for the number two team. Dick. Craig Biffle had moved to the eighth position, but he's not happy with his car. Not at all. Loose in, tied out. They're going to make enough adjustments on this pit stop. He may well lose some positions on the racetrack. Pit road is open for the lead lap cars, and Jeff Gordon brings them down. Got about all 17 cars on the lead lap on pit road. It's been about uh, 20 laps since they were last there under green. See the 48 car there. That's where Chad Knauss and Jimmy Johnson are so good. It was what we talked about at the top of the show, anticipating what this racetrack is going to do and the changes they need. Jeff Gordon leads them off pit road. Johnson second. Dale Jr. and Jeff Burton. Kurt Busch, Kenseth, and Stewart. Not a lot of shakers and movers there. You see a few lost positions, gain positions. Caution flag out at lap 117, third one of the day. NASCAR Next Cup Racing on Fox is sponsored by Gillette Deodorant, triple protection technology for men. By Goodyear, innovative technology to help you get there. By FedEx, every day is race day. And by Domino's Double Zero Deal, the official pizza of NASCAR. 215 laps to go. It's Jeff Gordon ahead of Jimmy Johnson right now. Hendrick Motorsports, that race team going for its fifth straight. It hasn't been done since the 70s. And when we last left you two weeks ago, Martinsville, the closing laps, remember? It was Jimmy leading Jeff and Gordon doing all he could to get ahead of Johnson. But in the end, Jimmy didn't let up his teammate. Jeff Gordon owns part of that car, and it was Jimmy coming in first. How will today be Jeff Hammond? They trade the information. You heard Jeff Gordon earlier talking about it. Yeah, he was calling crew chief Steve Letard early on, trying to find out where Jimmy was running to see what his car was doing when his 24 car went off a little bit tight as we get ready to go back green. Chevy, Mike has the top four spots. Thanks, Chris. Getting set for the restart, Jimmy Gordon. Yeah, him, him too. Him and, too. And Jeff Johnson. <laughs> All, right. Yeah. All right. 
What is it? That Tell ice, you what. ice cream bar next door got you all messed up. Yeah, no, I think it's time for shut us up. <laughs> How about let our Emmy nominated audio crew led by Freddie Aldis crank it up for us on this restart. the front of the pack and now Jeff Burton also breaks free of race traffic. I'll tell you one thing, there's some guys back in there that are really, really leaning on each other. Golly gee, they've made a little contact. They're so far so good. Well, I think one reason they're leaning on each other is a lot like that 19 car up there you see just in front of Jimmy Johnson, Elliot Sadler. He's the first car lap down. We almost have as many cars a lap down as we do lead lap cars. Those guys fighting to stay up there to maybe get the free pass should we get a caution. Elliot Sadler right now in the 19th position. Yeah, Jeff Gordon is so good. And when he gets out front, he just checks out on these guys. Second place, Jimmy Johnson has his hands full. And he is now the third place car. Dale Jr. moves into second. Steve. Mike, you guys have been talking about these race teams anticipating changes and keeping up with the racetrack. That's exactly what that number eight crew did on the last pit stop. They actually reversed a change they made on the previous stop. They put air back in the left front tire. And the really good news for Junior fans is they had a wicked fast pit stop. It was sub 13 seconds, Matt. It's a work in progress for Jeff Burton and his 31 team. The last two stops, they've made small air pressure adjustments, just trying to tweak that race car's balance. Right now, he says it's still a little tight through the center of the corner. Let's go to Kristen. Steve Burns talked about adjustability, making changes back to where they did before with the eight. Well, that's exactly what the 20 did also. They put the air back in the tire that they had taken out on the previous stop. Tony said the car free up just a little bit. Dick Berger. Well, Greg Biffle lost six positions on that last pit stop because the crew pulled a spring rubber out of the left rear corner of the car. That's a chassis tuning device. Here it is, and it worked. Biffle said the car is much better now. The spring rubber just lets the car turn better. It takes a little pressure off that left rear tire frees the car up a little bit, lets it turn through the center of the corner much, much easier. And that's where he looks so good. Just that left right there down in turn three and four. His car flew through the middle of the corner almost so fast he had to roll out of the gas to keep from running over David Streamy in the 40. Sterling Marlin about got run over in this pack. I mean, things things are heating up when you're working lap traffic. Yeah. And there are, as Larry pointed out, so many lapped cars. Well, everybody's car is pretty good, you know, on the restart. You got fresh tires on. Boy, I tell you, these guys are really racing hard, though. I keep I keep waiting for one of them to run over the other one, but they haven't done it yet. Little little group right in there with Dale Jarrett and them that are really treacherous. Just saw Denny Hamlin now. He is still a lap down in the 24th position. Got a lap down back on lap 70. We had to come pit road because of a left rear tire loose. That's about the fourth time today I've looked at Jeff Burton and go, what happened? Is something wrong with his car? No, he's big picture racing. Kurt Busch is faster than him. He found a place where Busch could pass him that it wouldn't slow up his momentum. Let him on, let him go on. Fix the throttle up once again. Hey. Setting out front where Jeff Gordon is is a place to be, and I'll show you a place that's not to be. These guys right here, they're three wide, they're hammering on each other. Got some guys in here that are not handling all that great. Look at the one car come off the corner there, all jacked out of shape. It was a, just a slight slide. Woo. 
That's what you call ride on cowboy right there. Brian Vickers got the free pass on that brief debris caution. We've completed 129 laps in the Samsung 500 on Fox. Jeff Gordon continues to be one of the fastest cars on the racetrack. He leads Dale Earnhardt Jr. by one and a half seconds with 135 laps completed. Texas. Jimmy Johnson's the third place car. He is four seconds off the lead. And closing in is Kurt Busch. The fourth place car, his Penske Dodge, is 4.4 seconds off the lead. One thing I like about Kurt Busch is, like me, he is a long-suffering, lifelong Chicago Cubs fan. Cubs fans, and a one, and a two, and a three. Love to beat the Cardinals. I love to see uh, the Cubs do strong, especially at home at Wrigley, because there's no other place like it. So just the experience in general. If you haven't been to Wrigley, you'll know what I'm talking about when you go. Absolutely. Big Saturday. On Fox, Major League Baseball, every Saturday, 3.30 p.m., and some of you will see the Cardinals versus the Cubs, 3.30 Eastern time. And then Saturday night under the lights, NASCAR racing in Phoenix. So a big sports Saturday on Fox. Now, if you noticed, the T-shirt Kurt Busch had was, I know the words. And what he was referring to yeah. shortly before <laughs> oh, that, on. Jeff Gordon had been to, as he referred to it, Wrigley Stadium and tried to sing take me out to the ball game and it just wasn't exactly the the perfect rendition of it well jeff said he wasn't used to the sound coming back a second or two later in the reverb from the speakers and, and got a little off time and that's what i'd have said too yeah <laughs> and the sun was in his eyes right yeah. okay. i've had stuff like that happen to me stuff will reverb back to you in like three or four days later <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And now uh, let's see a little bit of video and hear from our uh, on, onboard commentator, Tony Stewart. He's not our onboard commentator, but he did have to tell the crew what happened. Yeah, but it didn't hurt it. That was a kiss. And you saw it right at the end of the safer barrier. Caught just the tail end of the barrier. It's tapered a little bit right there. Don't believe it would do all that much damage. Probably slowed down there for lap two to be sure everything was all right. Yeah, the only thing I will say is he's still running in the sixth position, talking about Tony Stewart in the 20 car. But right now, he's a couple of tenths off of what our leader is. And Jeff Hammond, I think the biggest thing we've been talking about it since the pre-race is right now the track has went up to 105 degrees. That's 40 degrees hotter than practice yesterday. A lot less grip. A, a lot less grip, Larry, and you know, the thing is amazing me right now, I want to point this out, Jeff Gordon, our, our leader, has led 133 laps, and believe it or not, guys, that equals the same number of laps he's led in all previous 12 other Texas races. I mean, it's incredible the dominance of this race car today and the way Steve Letarte and his entire group have been able to get this car set up for these conditions and adjust during the course of the race, not to mention be really good on pit road. Yeah, Jeff, if he leads about 30 to 35 more laps, he will go ahead and sew up the additional five bonus points for leading the most laps. Got a little trouble brewing behind him, though. <laughs> Brewing. Just uh, just seven tenths of a second behind, Steve. Yeah, Mike. Jeff Gordon saying his car is just a little bit free in turn four, a little tight in one and two. And I talked to his crew chief, Steve Latart, this morning, and they've been talking about Larry Mack referred to the team saying it's the car of overtime between preparing new cars, testing, and getting this car ready. He says it's been a brutal stretch, but their optimism has remained very good. And he said in the month of May, it's even worse. He said he has a calendar, and he marks a yellow mark if they're testing, racing, or in the wind tunnel. He said right now, there's only two days that aren't marked yellow in the month of May. We think, of, think about it, Mike. We started the year off with a restrictor plate car on a two-and-a-half-mile track. The next week, we were in California on a two-mile track with a current car. Then we went to uh, to one of the mile and a half tracks, Atlanta, with the current car. Next thing you know, we're at two half-mile racetracks with the car tomorrow. 
and now we're back here with the current car. So you've had three different cars, four different kinds of racetracks in the first seven races of the year. Oh, by the way, in a couple of weeks, we're going to do some restrictor plate racing at Talladega. Yeah, again, <laughs> back with the restrictor plate car. So it's really, really hard for preparation to get these things all ready to go to the racetrack, plus backups. Now let's have a look at how Dale Earnhardt Jr. caught Jeff Gordon with Fox 3D. We can show you the line that Gordon is running. That's that yellow stripe behind his car and compare it with where Dale Earnhardt Jr. is on the racetrack at this moment. Pretty different. That's where Dale Earnhardt Jr. has been running turn three and four almost since the drop of the green flag. He Woo. loves that high line. Woo. Woo, baby. Whoa. He does love that high line, but boy, she got a little loose coming up off turn four that time. And, and we see Junior's car do this. When Junior's having a problem with his car, here's what it does. We, when he's not happy with his car or when his car is not handled like he wants it to, it seems like right on corner exit, she gets a little squirrely with him. Now he's going to try the bottom in turn three. Gordon way up high. Will Junior get the lead? 200,000 folks on their feet think he will. <laughs> I was going to say, everybody here is standing waving red hats or towels or something. Well, Jeff Gordon's spotter is saying Junior's running high in three and four. So Gordon moves up to run high in three and four. And what does Junior do? He goes where he's not. You know, this has definitely been a racetrack that Dale Earnhardt Jr. has always ran well at. He got his very first career win here in 2000 one of the few victory lane celebrations his dad got to enjoy with him. I'll never forget a road out of here that day on the helicopter with the Dale Sr. And he was talking about he, how Junior and them had run the same setup in his cup car that he'd been running in his Bush car. And, and Dale was adamant about it just can't work. That setup can't work in a cup car. Great big sway bar, soft front springs. No way that's going to happen. <laughs> but it did. Now you see at the top of your screen, Jeff Gordon's telemetry at the bottom, Dale Jr.'s. But they do run the same rear end gear, so the RPM at the same point on the track would be similar if the cars are running the same speed. Well, the biggest thing that will dictate a different RPM or miles per hour, who gets back to the gas the soonest in the corner and who can stay in it. That last time coming off turn four, you could hear Dale Earnhardt Jr. because his car is not gripping good on the late exit. He had to roll out of the throttle. Miles apart on entry, but look how close they are on exit. And that's all because Jr. can get back in the gas and hang that tail out again, bud. Did it again off turn four, about every other lap right now. Well, it's probably a good time for our next singular virtual crew chief question, which is about Jeff Gordon. As Larry pointed out, this is the only track on which Gordon has never won a race of any kind. Will Jeff Gordon win today? Yes or no, A or B? Text the message crew to 191 from your AT&T or singular wireless phone, or go to foxsports.com, keyword singular. You know, as I watched Jeff Gordon in the eight car, I heard Steve Burns report a while ago about anticipating and keeping up with changes. And to me, that's something that Tony Urie Jr. and Dale Earnhardt Jr., they've had missing for a long time, is they've never done a good job of keeping up with the right changes. Looks like they may be gaining on it, at least for today. There's the gap, first to second, with 151 laps complete in Texas. NASCAR Next Up Cup Racing on Fox is sponsored by Allstate, official insurance sponsor of NASCAR. We've got a new leader in Texas. Dale Earnhardt Jr. went after Jeff Gordon. Took the bottom of the racetrack away down in turn one. Drove off turn two with the lead. And Junior Nation came to their feet. Yeah, new sheriff in town. Big red. He's now pulled away from Gordon by one second, but has to deal with traffic here. You know what I like about that eight car, Larry, is he can go where he can run the bottom, or he can slide her up the hill and run the top. He's got a pretty good car, looks to me like. That's where he finally took advantage of Jeff Gordon as being able to go where he needed to with that eight car.
So Gordon now second one second behind Jimmy Johnson third three point four seconds back and Kyle Busch coming. Dick Bergeron. Uh, indeed he is by Kyle Busch from the back of the pack has moved all the way to the sixth position on the last pit stop. Absolutely no adjustments. He has said the car is really good responsive and when he gets in clean air which he's in right now he can run laps as fast as if not faster than the leader. Yeah Dick of course the field was set by points because of qualifying being washed out. Kyle Busch was slated to start fifth but in the first practice yesterday they crashed their primary car had to go to backup car and even when we do not have qualifying if you crash and have to go to a backup car after the intended qualifying session you have to go to the rear of the field but he is on a march to the front with his five car. Yeah he and his brother both I mean they have done phenomenal jobs in these backup cars to be where they are and hey the two car is looking mighty good it's probably the best I've seen the two car look since Daytona. But we've been talking about some comers and goers. Carl Edwards in the 99 car, when they first started this race, he moved right up to the front. But Steve, right now, he's back in 15th in jeopardy of going a lap down to leader Dale Earnhardt Jr. Oh, Larry Mack, he wants a caution flag bad. About eight laps ago, he said he felt a bad vibration. It seemed to dissipate a little bit as he kept going, but he wants a caution flag and he wants to get to pit road. He's just trying to hang on right now. Behind him, Tony Raines in the 96. Then Jamie McMurray and Brian Vickers is the last car on the lead lap. You know, almost every race team in this race is located in the Charlotte, North Carolina area. And you consider when we race there at Lowe's Motor Speedway, it's a home game. Right now, we had Sterling Marlin in the 14 car get bad out of shape coming off turn four, but we stay green, no caution. But going back to the 96 team, actually running here at Fort Worth is almost like a home game because the, the owners, Troy Aikman, Roger Stahlback, they live here in the Dallas area. Managing partner Bill Saunders from Dallas, plus DLP HDTV, this is their headquarters. So a good day to have a good top 20 run going here in 16th right now. Marlin, it looks like, will not bring out the caution. He got down to the track. Apron. I don't know. I don't think he's going to make it back, though. Uh, Mike, he's going mighty slow halfway down the back. Well, as Steve reported, Carl Edwards hope he does not make it. Looking for that caution flag. Elliot Sadler hopes he doesn't make it. Sadler would get the free pass. Marlin is, appears to be coasting. See if he makes it to pit road. He's way off the racing surface, so does not pose a problem to the competitors unless that car would stop. Don't make it back, we got to push it. He's going to make it. Don't make it back. He's coming here. You know, we do a thing when we do an arrow test called a coast down. I guess that'd be a good coast down test good for start. To see how far it'll go without power. Yeah. And he will make it to pit road. He's going to make that dreaded dirt left turn to the garage area. And right now, it looks like he may join Mike Bliss, Kenny Wallace, and J.J. Yaley, the three cars that are out of the race. Stewart has been slipping back. Montoya gets him for 10th place. Now, that contact that the 20 had with the uh, wall looks like it's hurt the car a little bit. Matt? Mike, if you're wondering how Juan Pablo Montoya is fitting in with his fellow drivers here in NASCAR, all you have to do is look at his calendar on June 6th. It's a Wednesday. He's going to be participating in the next El Prelude to the Dream, a celebrity dirt late model race on the high banks at Eldora. And I said, have you ever been on dirt before? He says, not really. But Kevin Harvick told him, actually, while everyone was huddled in the hospital, waiting out the tornadoes, that you couldn't do any worse than I've done the past two years. Go, you'll have a great time. So something new again for JPM dirt. So Johnny Montoya is going dirt track racing. Oh boy. oh boy, that ought to be exciting. <laughs> now we are right on top of what will be green flag pit stops. All the leaders were on pit road back at lap 117. In fact, Brian Vickers, the 83 car in a Toyota, just was on pit road a couple laps ago. Here you see Kurt Busch in the two, Scott Riggs in the 10, and here comes Matt Kenseth in the 17. All these will be scheduled green flag stops. And Bush drops out of fourth place to make his stop, Krista. The call is for slight changes. Kurt Busch said if we tighten this thing up any, we are going to lose our speed. He's just a little bit free. Air pressure and wedge. That's the call from Troy Raker. Kurt Busch says, I like it.
Pickett, Dick Bergeron. Well, they've been working on Matt Kenseth's car in every single pit stop, but they can get it close, but they can't get it just right. He was in eighth position before that pit stop where they made multiple adjustments. Kevin Harvick is in, so is Robbie Gordon. Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson again pit in tandem on the same lap. Martin Truex is in, and so is Mark Martin, Matt. And Johnson's team going to go for another track bar and wedge adjustment. He said his car had made big improvements. The wandering was gone. It was still a tick tight on entry and just a little free on exit. He's away, Steve. Jeff Gordon complaining about his car getting really tight as Dale Earnhardt Jr. went past him at the bottom of your screen. You see Dale Earnhardt Jr. coming to the attention of his team. Tony told Tony Urie Jr., his crew chief, that his car had gone from neutral to a little bit on the loose side. So four tires for Dale Earnhardt Jr., Dick. Kyle Busch in, no adjustments to the chassis again other than tire pressure, four tires and fuel. He has had a good car all day. Christoph. Tony Stewart, that contact he had with the wall did make his car tight in the center and loose off. Small adjustments, and Tony Stewart is off pit road. Reed Sorensen leads for the first time today. There's Montoya's stop. He's in a little close to the wall, is he, Larry? He's very close, which makes it hard to get to the jack underneath there and hard to get those tires back on and off, Matt. And Juan Pablo Montoya's crew already completed service on his 42. He said the car was really loose at the beginning of the run, but as the fuel burned off, it started to tighten up. The car wasn't too bad near the end of that run. Man, I thought Gordon was gonna run over Dale Jr. there. Uh, Jr. just come out of the pits, wasn't quite up to speed, and boy, Jeff really ran up on him hard. And uh, right behind these two guys at uh, this time is Jimmy Johnson. He did a much, much better job on pit out that time. Didn't let uh, Gordon and then get so far away from him. Getting up the speed a lot quicker. Right. Our Fox 3D showed that on the last pit stop, Jeff Gordon was much quicker through the gears and accelerating up to speed. Watch it. I tell you, good thing, Jimmy. I think the spotter must say, give him some break. Go up, go up. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Because Jeff Gordon was headed for a collision. The 24 car had pitted about two laps earlier than the eight car, but right now, now this is it. We, we've cycled through the green flag stop. So Dale Earnhardt Jr., the eight car, he is back in the lead of this race. Everyone has been to pit road. 18 cars on the lead lap in Texas, 172 complete. Junior, Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson. You gotta be willing to fight for it. Welcome back to Texas, more than halfway. Dale Earnhardt Jr. has the lead. He's moved up from 40th to 11th in points in the last four races. And let's quickly recap how he got here. A star-studded lineup through the race today. Pole sitter Jeff Gordon went 146 laps, more than all of his previous 12 races combined in Texas, leading 52 straight in this race. Meanwhile, Tony Stewart, who called his car junk early and then said, scraping the wall there, this car is not so bad, has threatened to lead. But Junior came from 12th on lap 154 to take the lead. It's been 32 races since Junior's last win. He won in Richmond last year. And our Domino's race summary shows nine different lead changes, six leaders, an impressive group of leaders. As right now, it's Junior, Gordon, Jimmy, Kurt Busch, and then Jeff Burton and Jeff Hammond, the largest green flag run, or most the lengthiest, I should say, 66 laps. And based on where Junior is, holding serve after that last pit stop, a key to the rest of this race. I think it's a key to the rest of the race. I think the pits crews have got to be on for the remainder of this race. They've got to make the right kind of adjustments. And you know, Larry McReynolds talked about keys to winning this race. Make sure you make the right pitch, keep it up the track. But the key right now also could be engine durability. And you get further in this race, it really starts to take its toll on these engines. Let's rejoin Daryl, Larry, and Mike. 153 to go here, and Junior leads Jeff Gordon by just seven tenths of a second. Not what you'd call a comfortable lead. No, but it's kind of the ebb and flow of this race. Je Jeff Gordon dominates for a while. Junior's going to dominate for a while. It's the team that can figure out what to be, if we're to be at the end of this deal with the right changes and adjustments, that's going to be in victory circle. And Larry, how do you get around to deciding 
what does that car want next? Well, because that'll be the decision that wins the race. Yes, it will. I mean, what you've done, you have gathered data through this entire race. And you, and you go back to that notebook like Darrell was talking about earlier. And what you're going to continue to do is get information from that driver. What was it like the first 10 or 15 laps of a run? What was it like late in a run? And that'll help you make the decisions. You always know when you're at one of Bruton Smith's tracks. And <laughs> we're not worthy. They just sent over a big plate of shrimp cocktail, and here come the Dove bars. Uh, folks in the pits, we'll, we'll send some along. It'll be a little bit. This is a rare thing for us, though. Yes. <laughs> hmm, trouble on Matt Kenseth. Well, he had he had a problem with the right rear yesterday that uh, almost took him out of the show. Dick Bergeron. Well, he may have a flat left rear tire right now. Uh, they're not sure what's going on. The crew is not yet up on the wall, but he has radioed his concerns against the pass. And Dick, he's running in the seventh position right now. See right behind him, Reed Sorensen in that 41 car. That's a battle for position. Speaking of battle for position, Jimmy Johnson in the 48 has caught his teammate, Jeff Gordon, in the 24. They're about three quarters of a second behind leader, Dale Earnhardt Jr. And, and that's exactly what I'm talking about on the 24 car. He's been losing time after every pit stop. He was running in the 30, 80s, and 90s. Last time out, he was running in the 31 flats. Now he's running 31, 20. Mm. They're not keeping up with the racetrack. Dave Blaney moves up and out of the way of the lead lap cars. Steve? And Mike, we've been talking about those adjustments. The problem for Jeff Gordon, he's been staying tight for most of the race, but now he's loose getting in the corners. That's what happens when you're tight off. You keep taking wedge out, making changes to help the tight off. All of a sudden, the thing is spinning out, getting in the corner. 40% of you said Jeff Gordon would get his first Texas win today. Of course, we did pose the question before Dale Jr. took the lead away. And Mike, something else, this racetrack very well in the last 50 to 75 laps as we get down to those last one or two pit stops. It may go through some other transition going the other direction. I think we'll start getting some shade down in turn one and two. That's going to cool the track down. That's going to make it go through some changes. Now, a battle, I know we've been watching battles for first, battles for second, third, but a battle that I've been watching all the way back in about the 15th position, right in front of our leader, Dale Earnhardt Jr., is three cars fighting to stay on the lead lap. Teammates David Strimmy and Juan Pablo Montoya as well as Brian Vickers in an 83 car. All those guys are on the lead lap. How Montoya got back that far, you made the note while ago, Mike, a 27 second pit stop took him from a half a lap down to almost getting lapped. I tell you, Junior's having a tough time though with these cars. It's really costing him and Gordon is closing back up on him. Junior's car doesn't look like it's quite as good as it was. The reason Montoya's stop was so long, rookie mistake. He pulled in too close to the pit wall for them to be able to change the left side tires quickly. And, and Mike, you and Daryl and I sat down with Juan about a month, a month and a half ago, and he was very honest in saying one of the things he's struggling with still is pit road. He's not used to 40-something cars being on pit road at one time and guys jumping across the wall at him. Formula One, he's not used to having two cars on pit road at the same time. His young teammate, though, is having quite the day. Reed Sorensen has uh, flirted with the top five. He's currently in seventh place, but watch this gaggle that he was in a moment ago. Used uh, Robbie Gordon, the seven, as a pick to get by Greg Biffle in the 16 car. Greg Biffle in the 16. That was a battle for position with Reed Sorensen in the 41. Best career finish of fifth. He's got a chance to match or exceed that today. 144 laps to go in Texas. Dale Earnhardt Jr. leading Jeff Gordon by eight tenths of a second. NASCAR Nextel Cup Racing on Box is sponsored by Wendy's new four alarm spicy chicken sandwich by the auto parts experts at AutoZone. Get in the zone, AutoZone. By Singular, now the new AT&T. And by Toyota, moving forward. Dale Earnhardt Jr. leading Jeff Gordon by two seconds. Right, we go all the way back to lap one. Good hands go inside, driver. inside, way inside. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Had to miss a crowd of spinning race cars. But on behalf of Sauter, 
Allstate will donate $1,000 to the Urban Youth Racing School. Allstate official insurance sponsor of NASCAR. Are you in good hands? Jeff Gordon has his hands full. Jimmy Johnson has been all over him lap after lap and cannot get by. They just put the, the Brian Vickers in the mix. He just went a lap down. But I think he's just reminding his old teammates that, you know, we used to be teammates. Of course, Brian Vickers trying to stay the very first car one lap down. If we do get a caution here with 137 laps to go, he would be back on the lead lap. He actually got the free pass a little earlier in the race. You know, he and, he and Doug have done a great job. Uh, once they get in the race, their car is usually pretty competitive. Doug Richter. Side by side for second. Johnson may prevail. Nope. Gordon gets a good run up off the corner, and they're dead even. Middle of the back stretch once again. Timmy will get him here, though. He's this got, that this picks problem. up right about where it left off at Martinsville. Positions reversed. Jimmy's good in the middle, and Jeff is good coming off the corner. In one reason, Jeff Gordon, the 24 car, is so good coming off the corner. He's running that high line. He can keep the engine wound up up there. There are PM up. Yeah, they'll swap. You take the bottom, I'll take the top. Jeff Burton behind them by about three quarters of a second, and then Kurt Busch, the highest running Dodge in the race. His number two is fifth. Let's go to his pit. Earlier in the race, you heard Kurt Busch say he's a baseball fan. Well, this year he has been swinging for the fence, but he has had a lot of home runs taken away. Good runs in Daytona, Las Vegas, Atlanta, but no good results. Well, the forecast starting to look that way a little bit for this fantastic car. Kurt just got on the radio and said the changes they made are not making me turn any better. In fact, they're making me loose, snapping loose on the straightaway. Dick Bergren. Well, Greg Biffle has engine problems. He has just sent to the crew the information that the engine is skipping and before that he said he thought it was starting to get ready to blow up we talked about that at the top of the show this place is very very hard on engines and uh, we just had talked about a car that was running in the top 10 reed Sorensen in the 41 car i'm sure we'll find out what exactly his problem was but he has taken his car to the garage here he came down pit road never hesitated we are hearing that it was an engine failure on the 41 car and we're averaging almost 150 miles an hour uh, in this race and we haven't had very many cautions and that just keeps those engines wound up that much longer. We do need to make note that Sterling Marlin in the 14 car, Kyle Petty in the 45, David Reagan in the 6, they are back out on the racetrack now after having problems earlier. Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson fight for second. I wonder if that's a little bit of back at you after two weeks ago at Martinsville. We'll, we'll explore that in a bit. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is your leader by 1.4 seconds, Steve. And Mike, he's having a lot of fun right now. His pit crew has just had back-to-back sub-13 second pit stops. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. just told his crew chief, Tony Urey Jr., I don't know if the high side is faster, but it sure is fun. I like it when I'm having fun, boys. Dale Jr. stock going up. He is in a renewal year and right now in contract negotiations with his team. Back in Texas, 125 laps to go. It's NASCAR on Fox. Dale Earnhardt Jr. leading Jimmy Johnson, Jeff Burton, and Jeff Gordon. Time for the Domino's Hot Lap this week. A new twist. The official pizza of NASCAR delivering the double zero Domino's Pizza Toyota to the Talladega race with a paint scheme based on a favorite Domino's pizza. Cast your vote for the paint scheme that you want to see on the car in Talladega. Text the letter of the corresponding paint scheme to Fox SP on your wireless phone. And a caution is out. Here at the Great the American Speedway. Right here, Gilliland's got a flat right front tire. Bring the caution out, Chris. Six leaders, nine different lead changes, and that would be our fourth caution of this race. Right now, let's check in with Jeff Hammond for our safety report. Several years ago, NASCAR decided they need to paint the drive shafts white in the event that they came unhooked, the competitors could better avoid them. Also, they've added safety straps to keep that from happening. Another one up toward the front to better protect the driver. But they've gone one step better now with the COT car, and that is a totally enclosed drive shaft tunnel. Now, 
Drive shaft should not be able to get to the racetrack if it falls down, but what we like more than anything else is the fact that it better protects the driver. These drive shafts are turning better than 16,000 RPM, and if one of them was to happen to come loose, well, if you can keep it enclosed and keep it off the racetrack, we can better protect not only the driver, the other fellow competitors, but the fans in the stands. All right, thanks, Jeff. Let's head back upstairs for that safety report and, uh, Mike, uh, check on uh, who benefits most from these pit stops. Well, Chris, there's no doubt when you look at cars like Juan Pablo Montoya, Carl Edwards, Tony Raines, they were just about to get lapped by Dale Earnhardt Jr. So, Darrell, you've got to believe those guys were really wanting to see this caution flag here. I think Jeff Gordon was ready for one, too. We got the report. He felt like his front tires had completely gone away on that 24. Oh, yeah. Uh, he was falling back uh, quite a bit there uh, just before that caution oh, came out. Dick Bergeron. Well, Kyle Busch will enter pit road in the sixth position, Mike. The car is just a little bit loose in throttle, but his biggest problem in this backup car is the seat doesn't fit him well. And he's got a backache as a result. And he said as soon as the race is over, he wants ice. But right now he wants four tires and fuel. No changes to the chassis yet again. They have not put a wrench in this thing on several pit stops. Christoph. Kurt Busch does need to make changes. In fact, they need to undo the changes they made on the last stop, plus add a little bit of air in the right rear. He needs more dig in the center of the turns. Matt. Jimmy Johnson to give me more of what you gave me last time. It really improved the race car. That was a wedge and a track bar adjustment. Great stop by Burton's team as well. Small air pressure change to the front. Dale Earnhardt Jr. said, I appreciate what you guys have done for the car. It's gotten better. I'm just a little bit tight. So they reversed a tire pressure change as well. And Jeff Gordon said, as you mentioned, Larry Mack, my front tires are gone, guys. Do something to get it back the way it was before. And Steve, I think they paid the price as far as the battle off pit road, but I'm sure maybe they took a little extra time to make those right adjustments. Jeff Burton almost gained another spot in this race off pit road. Pretty close there. 212 complete in the Samsung 500. NASCAR Next Talk Cup Racing on Fox is sponsored by Chevy. The most wins in NASCAR history. An American revolution. And you see car 42 carrying the memorial decal for number 42 as this is a very special day in baseball as you heard yesterday on Fox Saturday baseball. It was on this date 60 years ago that Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier in Major League Baseball playing for the Brooklyn Dodgers and Ken Griffey Junior came up with the idea asked Bud Selig could he wear number 42 in tribute to Robinson. Not only did Selig say yes he encouraged as many major leaguers as wished to to follow suit five complete teams and 150 players are wearing number 42 in tribute to a great player. The man who did a great thing for sports across America Jackie Robinson. He was followed by Larry Doby a couple of months later in the American League. And professional sports began to be integrated throughout America and in NASCAR. Wendell Scott from Danville Virginia the first African American to regularly drive on the circuit. In a largely southern sport he had to endure many of the same taunts and tribulations that Robinson faced in the big cities in the big leagues. But Wendell Scott persevered and won what is now a Nextel Cup race in Jacksonville Florida in 1963. Wendell was a sweet man uh, and a hard worker. I mean he did all the work on his car himself. He and his uh, couple of his sons. That's all the crew he had. I never forget I told you this before on his uh, fender you used to have who the mechanic was had mechanic me. <laughs> You know how Wendell got his first ride? It's a great little story. They were promoting a race in his hometown of Danville, Virginia, and the race promoter went to the chief of police and he said, I need a black driver for the race to try to encourage some of the fans to attend. Who can you think of that, that we ought to go talk to? He said, you go see Wendell Scott. He said, he's the one we can't catch. <laughs> I like that. From our DLP Ultimate Picture Cam, here's the restart. Remembering Jackie Robinson, Wendell Scott, and all those other great sports pioneers. Let's crank it up.
Stewart, 16 laps to go. Another pit stop, maybe two in the offing. And Dale Jr. once again out front. At well, least two more. You can just, on the, on the crank it up, you can just hear the guys how much, how hard they are in the throttle all the time. I mean, they're just burping the things in the corner right back wide open. Boy, Joe Nemechek was almost hard into Greg Biffle coming off turn four there. Tell you what, talking about both hands and feet up on the wheel, a car I've been watching, we rode with him just a second ago, Denny Hamlin, that 11 car. He's trying to get up there as we ride with him here. He wants to catch that car right in front of Jimmy Johnson, the 48 car. Denny is one lap down back in 18th position. 140 laps ago, had to make an unscheduled stop for a loose wheel, trying to get up there to be the first car lap down to get that lap back should we get a caution. I think Casey Kane may have just brushed the wall coming off four. Something happened yep. right in there. I don't know if it's he or the 66 car. Something happened. Last year's winner here, Kane, slow at the back of the pack, may have bumped the wall coming off four. But he continues, and this has not been a good day for Casey Kane. He is two laps off the pace in 30th place. And won both races there last year. No, he won the first race first here from the pole last year. I'm sorry. Now here's what uh, happened to Greg Biffle, and watch the 13 of Nemechek. They get together, coming off four right there. Now Greg Biffle in the 16 car, he's still on the lead lap back in the 14th position. What put him in the back of the pack? We heard that maybe his motor was going sour. Actually, they had a battery problem. They elected on that last caution to come to pit road and change the battery. Chris Myers asked me who that caution benefited. Obviously, Greg Biffle able to change that battery under caution. I think it also Kurt Busch because he says his back's hurting. We haven't had any cautions for you to get kind of set up in the seat, make some adjustments and make yourself feel better. Well, after the hit he had here Friday, oh, he should be sore. He should be. That was an incredible hard lick on the right side of the car. But, Darrell, what we're seeing with that 24 car right behind Kurt Busch in the two, Jeff Gordon in the 24, is he seems to be able to really go hard on fresh tires. He drove right by Jeff Burton a while ago. Let's just see if that car stays under him on the end of this run. Tony Stewart racing for NASCAR Day and running in ninth place right now, Krista. Well, imagine being a crew member and hearing your driver come on the radio and saying, right flat. That is exactly what happened down in the 20 pit right before that caution came out. But it wasn't Tony. You see, Tony was saying it, but he keyed his mic late. He was saying the number 38 has a right flat. The crew went crazy. The caution came out. Turned out Tony was fine. He just needed to rotate through the turns a little better. That's all. Well, that's definitely a car they have had to make some pretty serious adjustments on since the drop of the green flag. Real aggressive on that first pit stop early in the race. Matt Kenseth in eighth place. He is the highest running Ford in the race. Carl Edwards is 12th, Biffle 14th. Three Fords on the lead lap. And based on the Matt Kenseth's performance in most races, him being that close to the front, he could win this thing. Because usually the thing they're way back in 15th or 18th adjusting on it. Today he's in eighth adjusting on it. But you know, right in front of Matt Kenseth, well, we have Johnny Sauter in the 70 car who's a lap down, but Mark Martin in the 01 car, remember, had the points lead two races ago, elected not to go to Bristol, not to go to Martinsville. That pretty much ended his streak of 621 consecutive starts, but he's back in this Army car, and guess what? He's back in the top 10 in this race, too. And, and he's running a typical Mark Martin race, in my opinion, just kind of hanging around. Haven't heard much about him today. He's in the top 10. Wait till this thing's over with. Well, he's hanging right behind this battle for fifth place, Jeff Burton and Kyle Busch. They're about four and a half seconds behind the leader. I think Mark's a really big race fan. He just likes to watch a lot of racing from his from his windshield. <laughs> exactly. 16 cars on the lead lap, including Brian Vickers, who again got the free pass on that last caution. Dale Earnhardt Jr. leading Jimmy Johnson by two and a half seconds. There's the city of Dallas, a short drive from Texas Motor Speedway. We're located just north of the center of Fort Worth and just north of where the tornadoes touched down here Friday night. A change at second place where Jimmy Johnson has fallen off the leaderboard. That Lowe's number 48 has dropped a cylinder. 
And that was one of our keys to the race, engine durability. We're closing in on 100 miles to go. Now, do need to stress, this is not one of the new R07 engines of Chevrolet. The only Hendrick car that has one in is Casey Mears, the 25. And we hear there may also be problems on Johnson's teammate, Kyle Busch. Dick Bergman? Yeah, he came on the radio just a couple of moments ago, Mike, and said he could smell the engine. And meanwhile, Matt Kenseth, who was away behind him, said he thought there might be a problem with the number five's engine as well. And, and you know, you say, well, that's odd. No, one of the things that the driver can do, he listens. So if the engine changes a tune, you know it. And he smells. You're constantly smelling things inside the car. And if something changes, then you realize there's something going on. Jimmy Johnson comes in here third in the points. His teammate Kyle Busch comes in here fifth in the points. Boy, this has been a great battle. Tony Stewart and Juan Pablo Montoya <laughs> since this last caution. Montoya has been all over Stewart like a cheap suit. Man, I'm telling Just you. Hasn't been able to make the pass. What did you, I don't know what you say in, uh, in Spanish to, to Juan Montoya, but man, he took off. What Andale, is it? Andale, Andale. Andale, not boogity, 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 <laughs> but Andale, 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 right? I don't even know what boogity is in Spanish. It's it's universal. We'll get letters. No, no, it's the same all over oh, the world. It's boogity, 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 boogity is the same all over the world. That's good. That's a universal language. But Mike, he had a great pit stop on that last caution. Reason he had a good pit stop then versus a while ago is he was in his pit box where the guys could get around the car and get things handled on the left side. Now he's taking a higher line than Stewart. And they're closing up on Jimmy Johnson. Well, that high line was what got him up there. And then he started trying to mess around a bit, trying to get around Tony, and he lost a lot of ground. But here he is looking underneath. And Using Johnson as a pick. And there. there he goes. Here. Come on. And here comes Stewart back at him. Well, he got the run on the high side off turn two, just like we've seen so many times. You're just able to keep that engine wound up up now, there. Now, this is where you better be careful. Oh, oh Stewart there. around. Oh, I was just thinking that you might want to be real careful doing that. Nowhere one. for Jimmy Johnson to right go there. with that 48. All car. good. Toss is out. I don't think Jimmy hit him. Oh, he did yeah, a little bit. Yeah, he got him pretty good. Sorry about that, Jimmy. Montoya and Stewart side by side. Stewart goes around and is collected by Johnson. And of course, what put Jimmy back that far was the fact of being down a cylinder. Let's have a look. What happens is Mon Montoya goes down into turn three here, really hard under Tony. He wants to try to clear him if he can, but when he gets in here, you watch. Car gets a little bit loose and scoots up the racetrack and gets against Tony, and around he goes. Drove it hard in there, and then the car starts to walk up the hill. A little bit of, you can see his hands in there really working the wheel. Didn't make a lot of contact, but just enough to send him around. And Tony takes a pretty good hit from I Jimmy think, Johnson. I, yeah, but I think it's in an area that it probably isn't going to hurt anything. Yeah, he got him between the wheels, Darrell. That's so. what it looked like, yeah. And you can see how the car just walks up the track. That car on the outside's just pulling him. Tony's just pulling Juan right up into him. Look at Johnny Sauter in the 70s. Second time today, he gets the good hands award. Missed that one, as did Bobby Labonte. Let's see what the see what the smoke was doing here. Now you know that seemed like relatively light contact. Let's ride with Jimmy Johnson. The unavoidable, inevitable. Ted, stay down. See, Jimmy can't see right there. That's how. Dick Bergman. Stewart just came down. Kyle Busch drives into his pit. There'll be no effort on this engine, but for the first time all day, we're going to see a wrench go in the back of the car. There it goes as they begin to adjust the chassis. Car has just gotten a little bit too tight, Krista. Kurt Busch not only doing a dance out on the track, doing the dance in the chatter with his new crew chief, Troy Raker. The decision is a track bar and air pressure. He just needs a little more side bite. Matt. Chassis adjustment already completed for Jeff Burton. He says the car is just really too tight down in turns one and two. It's not arrow, it's something else. Steve. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is away. 
little or no adjustments, a quarter pound air pressure adjustment. The car turning really good on the eight. Jeff Gordon in the 24 saying, I was good for a couple laps on that run, but now it's way too tight. They raised the track bar on the 24 of Jeff Gordon. And Steve, they lost a ton of spots. You can see right there, six spots on pit road for that 24 pit stop. I'm not sure what happened on the stop, but Gordon was right behind Junior coming down pit road and was not happy with the pace and was giving Junior a little push there like, come on, we got to go. Tony Stewart spins off of Juan Pablo Montoya and then gets tagged by Jimmy Johnson to bring out caution flag number five. NASCAR Next Talk Cup Racing on Fox is sponsored by UPS, official delivery company of NASCAR. UPS delivers the chance to manage your own free fantasy auto racing league. Go to foxsports.com. Jeff Hammond, how did Jeff Gordon lose six spots on pit road? Well, Mike, we keep talking about how important these pit stops are, these final pit stops as far as track position is concerned. Well, when Jeff came in, it looked like a pretty normal stop, but they've had some problems. Last time in, they had trouble with the right rear, and it slowed them down. It cost them some positions. But when they come around, you see their guy on the right front. He's a little bit slow. Then he gets to the left front, and he actually has trouble, I think, getting the tire off. You see the Jackman reach in to pull the tire away to try to speed the stop up, but it still cost him six positions. That's how important it is getting off pit road smoothly. Dale Earnhardt Jr. remains the leader. Kurt Busch, Kyle Busch, Jeff Burton, Mark Martin, Matt Kenseth, Montoya, Jeff Gordon, Carl Edwards, and Martin Truex, the top ten. I'll be interested to see how this two car can uh, handle the eight car because actually they've been the two best cars here in the last several laps. Kurt doesn't get off a of turn two very well there, and his brother Kyle puts his bumper right up underneath of him, but uh, looks like he's got it going now. A little slow off a of two, though. And we definitely need to stress again, as we've been talking this entire race, those two cars, the two brothers running second, third, that's not the cars that were unloaded Friday morning when this track opened for inspection. Both of them crashed in practice. Both of them are backup cars. And we're riding with Denny Hamlin right now, still trying to get that lap back in 17th position. He's trying to get that free pass should we get a caution. But you know what, Larry, a tip of the hat to those crews because those cars came off the trailers fast, backup cars. Jimmy Johnson's taking his car to the garage. Dick Bergman's with him. Yeah, Jimmy's okay, but we want to give you an opportunity to take a look at our monitor here and talk us through the accident. Well, the Tony started spinning. On the back straightaway, I noticed the 20 and 42 were kind of running into each other. It looked like Tony was too happy with the 42, and they went down the corner, and the 42 came up and got into him. At this point, I'm just trying to not get rear-ended, and uh, unfortunately ran into the 20. So I think those guys had, a, had an issue that they were trying to sort out, and uh, this was the end result. Yeah, but here's the hard part. Where'd you need to go? Well, I expected him to spin out of the way. I knew his momentum wasn't going to take him to the inside wall, so I stayed low on the track and was hopeful that he was going to slide back up the track, and it uh, just didn't work out. But we were limping around with the wounded engine, so uh, just kind of put, us, put us out of our mis misery there. And driving blind. But the crew behind us is working hard on the car, Mark. They're going to try to get him back out. Thank you, Jimmy. Thanks, Dick. Jimmy Johnson, number three in the next Hell Cup standings coming into this race in the garage, along with Reed Sorensen, Mike Bliss, Kenny Wallace, and J.J. Yaley. I tell you, Tony Stewart, Larry, is just not having a very good day, and most of his trouble is off turn four. Hit the wall earlier there, and he and Joe Nemechek just made serious contact as they left turn four. You see Tony, I mean, he hits Joe really hard, and uh, if we can see the right rear of his car, it just about tore the quarter panel off of the thing. See it going down in the corner there. So he's uh, he's had some issues today. Now, even after that spin, all the damage you see there on the left side, he's still on the lead lap, the last car on the lead lap, 16th, about nine Fire seconds. Going down or something here. Now, Kurt Busch had caught Dale Jr. to within a car length. Now, Jr. stretches it out a little bit further. But that two car is awfully good right now. In fact, you look at the last uh, lap these guys ran. He was the only car in the 29 second bracket. Oh. You can see how he just beat oh. Dale Earnhardt well, Jr. back Junior, to the throttle. Jr. pushed way up the hill and had to get out of the throttle there. Open the door for Kurt to go by. 
Kurt Busch becomes the seventh different leader of this race. That two car, though, this is the best run they've had since February. And here comes Tony Stewart at Pitt Road. Yeah, he's not even had a top five finish since Talladega back last October, where he finished third, Kurt Busch. Krista? Tony having all sorts of trouble today. Yeah, you know, the turn four has really been the issue for him right now. Spotter got on the radio and said, man, I don't know if we're going to tear this whole car up. A right rear <laughs> tire going flat. The crew making the changes. Also working with a new front carrier this week, Scott Merritt, his very first Nextel Cup race. I mean, definitely he has had a decent day gone bad here over the last 10 or 15 laps. They had they had to be very aggressive with the adjustments on this car all day long. There you see the damage to the right rear. It's sure not the same car he had here last November when he went, what, 250 laps of the race? Same car. Same car. But <laughs> did, did something not different. Not acting the same. But I think that puts a period on why we've had 12 different winners here. You look at the two guys that won the races here last year, Casey Kane, Tony Stewart, not really even contenders today. Well, and the other part of that, Larry, is how many times has this track been... Oh. Whoa, Stewart! Oh, he's in trouble again. Turn four again. Caution way. Oh, and he got Dale Jr. Kyle Busch... Kyle just got into Jr. That was the second and third place car. Was being the key word. Oh, my gosh. Now... What's torn up on Junior's car doesn't include the spoiler, so if they pull that stuff off, he can race it like that. Yeah, I don't know. It's, this place is so dependent on Arrow. There you see Kyle Busch going to the garage area. So obviously the drive for five wins in a row, Hendrick Motorsports has taken a huge hit here over the last few laps. Watch Tony Stewart. He drives into turn three really, really hard, runs at uh, Kurt Busch here to try to get a run on him, and the car gets loose. And boy, when it does, around she goes, and the next thing you know, he's got company. And remember, I mean, he saves it. He's okay. Look the, behind him. I think that uh, the, the five ran into the back of the eight. Eight gets slowed down. Oh. The five doesn't. No Holy kidding. cow, lifted Junior's car all the way off the ground. Yeah, Junior's car's got a little bit more than cosmetic damage. That's a, probably got the track bar all bowed up and bound up now. Tony. Look at the car control here. He spins it, saves it, gets going. Now, let's ride with Dale Jr. We talked earlier about Kyle Busch flat out or half turned over. Sadly, both. That was a serious lick. Our Fox Extra Slow Mo replay. Boy, isn't it funny how the, the fortunes of a race turn? I mean, Jimmy Johnson, all of a sudden, he's in the garage. Here's our leader that's led most of this race, Dale Jr. He's crashed. Tony Stewart's crashed. Kurt Busch has crashed. Kyle Busch, I mean. Steve, how bad is it? Well, Mike, I was just listening to Dale Earnhardt Jr. talk to Tony Urey Jr. Tony Urey Jr. said, take the hammer to the right rear. And Dale said, be easy on it now. Be easy on it. In other words, Dale Jr. thinks he can still drive it. Before they even got close to pit road, Tony Urey Jr. had told every single member of the over-the-wall crew where to start working on this race car. If he didn't bend the rear clip, but as hard as he got hit, I can't imagine it didn't bend the rear clip. Uh, where the track bar can still work up and down, he might be okay. That's true. And aerodynamically, it didn't touch the rear spoiler. It's better this way. Get rid oh. of that rear bumper, they go faster. You'll go then, oh, especially yeah. down the straightaway, that's for sure. If he didn't get any chassis damage, he might be okay. Now, while we were showing all those replays, all of our leaders did come to pit road, and I'm pretty confident in saying what Robbie Riser, the crew chief for, for Matt Kenseth, did, Dick Bergeron, only 10 laps on their tires, looked like he wanted to lead by changing two tires, Dick. Ah, uh, you got it, Larry McReynolds. That's exactly what he did. He changed the right size only for track position. Well, he ain't going to have the lead because Kurt Busch stayed out. Did not pit, yes, with the two car. Again, it had only been about 10 laps since we were to pit road. And Jeff Gordon, Steve Letarte, the 24 car, they also changed his two tires. And you see their teammate right there, 
Kyle Busch in the five uh, trying to make repairs. We've got 80 laps to go in this race. Krista. Well, when we talked with Troy Rake earlier this week, we warned him, hey, if we're talking to you, that's probably a good thing because it means you're up front. But you guys chose not to come in. Why? Uh, we only got eight laps on the tires right now. And the longer we run, the more we run away from them guys. So we just, everybody said we'd be better off staying out. Well, your crew wants to know when you're going to pull out the aviator shades. Kurt's flying. What about you? Uh, right over there. When we're over there. Victory Lane. That's what we're looking for. Back upstairs. Now, another reason some of these guys elected like Kurt Busch to stay out, some of those guys changed two tires. It didn't change the schedule of pit stops. It's still a one-stop race for everyone to the end of the race. Like that guy lurking in second. What about that? Mm, oh, Mark, 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 Mark. What about that? The Army of One is about ready to go to war. How quickly things change here in Texas. Today's race on Fox is sponsored by Burger King, who reminds you to have it your way. By Craftsman, the official tools of NASCAR. Craftsman, available at Sears. By State Farm, great service, great rates. Nobody takes care of you like State Farm. And by Enterprise rent car we'll pick you up. 78 laps to go, Q Motor Oil race summary. Seven leaders, 10 lead changes. Jeff Gordon has led the most laps, 146, and you saw that Dale Earnhardt Jr. leading some 96 laps before problems occurred. Let's uh, do a quick recap in the last few moments here. 96 laps to go. The trouble started. This is a battle for ninth and 10th. Juan Pablo Montoya on the 42 car with Tony Stewart gets into Tony, who slips inside. Look at Jimmy Johnson. His vision blocked right into Tony Stewart. As you heard Jimmy tell us, uh, his car was having problems anyway. That Hendrick car out of the race. And then Behind that, Dale Earnhardt Jr. run into by Kyle Busch. We can only assume that his vision was blocked as well. Jeff Hammond and our 3D version to help get a better view of what Kyle did as we look at the speeds here to Dale Earnhardt Jr. And the key thing right here, 109 miles an hour by Dale Jr. He was slowing up trying to see where Tony was going. Bush didn't get slowed down, 150 miles an hour. He gets in the back of the eight car, does a lot of damage to both cars. Kyle's behind the wall, and now the eight car has got damage. All right, guys, we ain't too bad. Don't be panicking. You see what I got to fix? I need my left front fender fixed. I need my right rear quarter fixed. Get the bumper cover off. This puller is still good. You're still in it, boys. All right, so Dale Earnhardt Jr. talking to his crew, encouraging them. Currently 15th, Mark Martin, after a couple of weeks off, back up to second place. Yeah, no surprise right there. He's been sitting back there lurking all day. He's got that 01 car back up there in position once again to try to win a race. Kurt Busch, your leader, with 77 laps to go. Let's rejoin Darrell Waltrip, Larry McReynolds, and Mike Joy. So Kyle Busch in the garage. Tony Stewart able to continue, as is Dale Jr., and we'll have 15 cars on the lead lap. Jerry, uh, Jamie McMurray got the free pass. And I tell you what has been somewhat of a dismal year for Roush Fenway Racing. Matt Kenseth wins Fontana somewhat by process of elimination, but right adjustments. We have four of the five Roush cars up in the top eight right now. Green flag. And let me correct McMurray on the last caution. Denny Hamlin finally got in position to get the free pass, and Hamlin is back on the lead lap. Took him almost 200 laps. Riding with Jeff Burton around Elliott Sadler. Man, Sadler's uh, blocking the track. <laughs> he can't go anywhere. He's caught in the middle. He's just hunting a hole to get in. He's, my, uh, my. he's, uh, he's hunting that spotter to say <laughs> clear. Yeah. Either side right now. Not going to hear it for a while. He is one lap down. Boy, that's a sick feeling when they go by you on both sides. Riding with Juan Pablo Montoya up in the ninth position. Matt? Mike, on that last pit stop, while Jeff Burton took on two tires, Montoya's team went with a four-tire change to keep the car consistent for him. He said the car was a little bit tight in traffic, so they left it alone for this final run here. The final pit window should open around lap 277 to 280. So that's about 20 laps from now. We may expect final stops. It definitely is a one-stop race. Now, right after that restart, Matt Kenseth in the 17 car drove by his old teammate of Mark Martin in the 01 to take that second spot away. 
I think that's a good call to put four tires on one because I think he needs that for the maneuverability. I, I, he is really driving that car hard, and he's driving it all over the racetrack. I don't mean that in a bad way. He's been high, he's been low, but he's gotten a lot out of that thing lately. And we got some Fords starting to make some bold moves here. Matt Kenseth in second, and three more of them in the top ten, Edwards, Biffle, and McMurray. David Gilliland there, he's back in the 20th position, two laps down, had that tire problem earlier, brought a caution out. Kurt Busch's car owner, Roger Penske, has had some success here with the Indy Racing League cars, and Kurt's car is starting to look like one of Roger's IRL pointy cars. It is taken off and pulling away from the field. Might look like the car did yesterday in Long Beach, too. His cars ran first and second out there yesterday. And by the way, while I'm thinking of it, I want to say hi to John Force. Missed his first race in over 20 years. And that team has had some real, you know, heartaches and issues over the last couple of weeks with Eric Medlin. And I want to say hi to his dad, John. They're sweet people. And uh, we're praying for you guys. You know, the force is racing with a heavy heart. Good news is his daughter Ashley qualified well up into the top five. Third, I think she was. Now, we do need to mention that Jimmy Johnson in the 48 car just came back out of the garage area. We could see smoke coming out of the exhaust pipe. As he left pit road, he was too fast exiting, so he'll have to come back to pit road for a pass-through penalty. Uh, just kind of add an insult to injury, I guess you might say. Well, he's 23 laps down, and the next closest car is Ricky Rudd, 12 laps down. With 70 to go, they have a chance to pick up a couple of positions, but not a big chance. Can't tell you how many times that happens. Work on the car in the garage, come out of the garage, go back out on the racetrack. I, I guess you're just not thinking about, um, you know, you're wrecked, I'm lapsed down, and don't even think about pit road speed. You know, as we look at Kurt Busch up there in the two car leading the race, Chris Devoto reported on this earlier in the race. And again, our thoughts and prayers, well wishes go out to Roy McCauley, his crew chief who was elected to take a leave of absence from the racetrack. His wife, Amy, has been diagnosed with leukemia, took somewhat of a turn for the worse over the Easter weekend. Roy spending time where he should be with his wife, Amy, and that's how Troy Raker, uh, who is one of the chassis engineers, is up on the pit box. And Roy, we know you're tuned in, and uh, our thoughts and prayers are with you and Amy both. Raker kind of looked like Kyle Petty to me, sitting up there. Looks like, a, looks like a professor. Yes. Well, he's been an engineer for Ford for a number of years before moving to Penske Racing not too long ago. Kurt Busch, Matt Kenseth, Mark Martin. One thing they all have in common is they all three of them either do or did race and win for Jack Roush. Let's get down to our Ford cutaway car and Jeff Hammond. Mike, Daryl and Larry have been talking about the damage on the A-car, what kind of effects it may have to him. We've already seen the quarter panels are in pretty good shape. They straighten those out. And where that has an effect is the side force on the car when it gets into the turn. Losing this rear bumper cover really doesn't matter. Unless the air escape, it may affect the guys behind him more than Dale Jr. But the key was the possibility of damaging the rear clip and having a problem with the track bar as far as it working up and down and how it may affect the car as far as handling is concerned. Those are the things we'll have to watch of his next few laps and see whether or not the eight car is going to be affected by this. Yeah, he is, uh, Jeff. He's not very, you know, he's running at the very tail end of the field right now, and uh, the car just doesn't look like it's uh, anywhere near up to speed. And I couldn't imagine that he took the kind of hit he did from behind and not do some suspension damage. Yeah, he's still on the lead lap, Darrell, but he's almost a full second off of what leader Kurt Busch is running right now. Well, as we talked in the break, uh, he was lucky that Bush's car submarined and the nose went under his rear bumper. If you have that kind of contact with the car of tomorrow, both those cars are in the garage wrecked. Well, I think the tail of the tape was the differential in miles per hour. You know, you, as Jeff Hammond and Chris Myers pointed out, you had about 30 to 40 miles difference that Kyle Bush was running faster than Dale Earnhardt Jr. I'm not sure it would make a huge difference either way there. We attempted to uh, interview Kyle Busch. His car is in the garage under repair, and he declined our request. Mark Martin is third after a two-race layoff, which means a three-week vacation, counting the Easter break. Mark is back and feeling racy. He is, and I guarantee you he's saving just a little bit, too. He's not showing you everything he's got right now. He is three seconds behind Kurt Busch. 
Mark takes it to the edge. He just doesn't go over. When you're racing ex-teammates, as we pointed out, Daryl, all, all the first three were teammates at Roush. Do you have a better idea of what to expect when you're battling somebody who used to be racing with you instead of against you? I think it's like a football player maybe going to, a, to a, uh, one of his uh, teams he used to compete against. He almost has a sense about what play they're going to run next. And I think that's the way it is when you race against people that you spent time with. Pretty much got a sense about how they're going to race you, what kind of moves they're going to make, and what you can expect. So it makes it a little bit easier. Biggest problem Mark Martin has right now, no longer going to be a problem. Jeff Gordon in the 24 car. This pass happened on the front straightaway, but it started all the way over in turn two. Gordon got a good run down the back straightaway, completed the pass as he came off four onto the front straightaway, moves Mark Martin back to the fourth position. Kurt Busch, the leader, is the quickest car on the racetrack, lap after lap here. Jeff Gordon right now is second fastest. He's in third place. I want the cup. People in Texas, you do make me feel at home. Kurt Busch continues to lead here in Texas. Next weekend, we move to Phoenix. And coverage begins Thursday with next up Cup qualifying and Busch Series practice here on speed. Friday begins with Nextel Cup practice, then Busch Series qualifying, and more Nextel Cup practice also on speed. Saturday, NASCAR race day in speed, and then the Nextel Cup race. The Subway Fresh Fit 500 is on Fox in prime time, 8 p.m. Eastern, as NASCAR continues next weekend across the Fox networks. When you got horns like that old dude had, you won't need no chrome horn, that's for sure. <laughs> Speaking of riding, roping, and racing. Yeah, Hat, where's your cattle? Let's see what's <laughs> going on at the Hollywood Hotel. <laughs> Below the Hollywood Hotel, Jeff Abbott, Chris Myers, a Hollywood star, Kevin Alejandro from a Sleeper Cell, and then now we're going to see you with a new Fox show beginning tonight. It's called Drive. Called Drive, yeah. It's uh, high action, high drama, fast cars, racing for $32 million. And you're one of the guys in, a, in an action drama racing where people will do anything to win. Anything. Anything. That's, anything. I mean, that's what I think makes it so exciting. Anything to win. Anything yeah. to win. Anything will take this guy. All right, so if you're that desperate, <laughs> uh, we'll tune in. It's kind of, what, prison break on wheels at 200 yeah, miles an hour? Prison break lost, 200 miles an hour on wheels. You gotta love it. One of the actors you'll see in the new Exciting. show on Fox Drive. Check it out tonight. Drive, that, uh, that's gonna be interesting. Yes, interesting series. Looking forward to seeing that. Let me tell you what else is going to be interesting. Let's talk about our leader, Kurt Busch, in the two car. Remember, he elected to stay out on that last caution. He was last on pit road at lap 240. They have not been getting the greatest of fuel mileage. He's probably going to have to beat a pit road in about eight to ten laps. Everyone else, even the guys that change just two tires, they can go about ten to thirteen laps further than that. Kurt Busch will be forced to come to pit road and then be on pins and needles. They do not get a caution between that period and when everyone else makes their green flag stop. And those two tires, I know Jeff's complained about his car. They say he's not happy with it, but those two tires are paying dividends right now because he is nibbling away at the Kurt Busch right now. He's about two tenths quicker every lap. But there, there's no question, we're going to have about 35 to 40 laps to go. I think whether we get a caution or they stay green, you'll see all these guys get four tires on this next pit stop. And of course, we always talk about it, and we've not had a lot of issues today. These guys get ready to make this green flag stop, knowing it could be their last stop. They're up on the wheel, the adrenaline's flowing. Everybody's telling them to get in here, get in here. You can't afford no penalty for speeding or no mistakes during your pit stop. Sixth place battle, Greg Biffle. In the Ford has been caught by David Stremme's Dodge. Stremmy's had a good run today. Well, Stremmy's there in the seventh. Uh, his teammate uh, Juan Pablo Matoya is in eighth. And uh, all those uh, Ganassi cars continue to be impressive. Yeah, it wasn't that many years ago. All three of those Ganassi cars with a lot of different drivers all finished in the top five here at Texas. And remember, Reed Sorensen, their third teammate in the 41 car, was up in the top ten until he had engine problems earlier. i got to give a tip of the hat to Stremmy. 
I mean, you think about the kind of year he had last year, and his job is in jeopardy. Yes. And buddy, I tell you what, they made a couple of changes. What is Stephen uh, Stephen Lane? Steve Lane just Steve Lane became his crew chief. They got something going, and now with Juan there, they have a real great relationship. This kid is on it. Speaking of on it, that's 42 <laughs> car. <laughs> underlay, speaking, underlay. Speaking of his buddy, here he comes. <laughs> Sixth, seventh, and eighth place, and they are running about 10 seconds behind Kurt Busch, who has finished in the top 10 in six of eight races here. Texas. You know, I dated a girl from Texas once. You gotta love those cowgirls. <laughs> gotta love them. <laughs> and cows, too. Come on, Casey. Thought you won Texas last year. Keep up. Since Jimmy's number is 48, does that mean he's twice as good as you, Jeff Gordon? Jeff Gordon. I dated a girl from Texas once. It wasn't Cindy, was it? And what? You, you too? Yeah. Weird. Friendly girl. <laughs> NASCAR Next Star Cup Racing on Fox is sponsored by the Home Depot, NASCAR's home improvement warehouse. By Ford, bold moves they happen every day by Subway restaurants, Subway, eat fresh. And by Nextel, only from Sprint, helping NASCAR Nextel Cup fans get more done. Debris in turn four has put us under caution as Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s car is pushed to the garage. And that caution comes out one lap after race leader Kurt Busch comes in to make his green flag pit stop. So he will be either on the tail end of the lead lap or a lap down. We'll see how it's scored and see whether he pits again and what the rest of the leaders do. There uh, is the debris. And folks, if, if we can see it, we'll show it. So there's what has put us under caution for the seventh time today. Unbelievable. Yeah, th this is what's going to happen here. He's going to, as you see, his uh, stand-in crew chief Troy Raker that he's going to be a lap down right now but obviously all of our other leaders will come to pit road he will stay out which will put him right behind the pace car when we restart this race at the tail in the lead lap not the greatest position to be in probably with about 35 or 36 laps to go but if we get a quick caution there's only 14 cars on the lead lap now, this also happened while we were in break. Jeff Gordon trying to chase down Kurt Busch. That may be where a little bit of debris came from, guys. Gordon was definitely closing on Kurt, but Kurt's tires were pretty much shot, I'd say. So the pits will be open, and this could be the final stop of the day. Well, here's good news. Kurt Busch gets the free pass. He's back on the lead lap. Here's Dick Bergeron. And I'm in Matt Kenseth's pit, and this is a big one. This is also one of the very best pit stops in all of big league racing. They are not going to mess with the chassis, but they are going to try to fix his windshield. There it goes. Matt had been complaining that he simply couldn't see to Matt. And this is the money stop for both the 31 and 42 teams. Burton really didn't know exactly how far to go on adjustments because they took two tires a last stop. Four tire change this stop for both the 31 and 42, Steve. Jeff Gordon will get four tires this time, Matt. They took two on the last stop. Gordon also said to Steve Letarte, check the deck lid. I did hit the wall. Krista. Absolute heartbreak in the two pit when that caution came out. They were deciding the, whether the, what they could do. The tires only have a lap on them. Obviously, they're going to stay out, but they do get that break with the, with the lucky dog. So a little bit of a chance here for the two team but you can see their heads hung a little bit definite frustration in the two pit i know they don't have a lot of laps left but he's not in that bad of shape when you're going to restart in 14th place so no that's a good news for him how about that race off pit road jeff gordon by sitting on the pole by virtue of the field being set by points he got that pit selection that's what won him the battle off pit road been pretty good out there all day long matter of fact Get ready. Crank it up, Gene. They fired up. All right. Get ready. Nothing too crazy to the line, but ready, ready, ready. Green, green flag, green flag. Get ready. Hold your line. 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 Side the wreck behind oh, you. Caution. 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 Welcome back to Texas. We'll get you ready for the restart with this Napa race summary. 
38 laps to go. Jeff Gordon, who has led the most laps today, out in front. Seven cautions for 33 laps, seven different leaders, 11 lead changes. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is in the garage along with Jimmy Johnson, Kyle Busch, and others. As we get set for the restart, the only driver in the top five who has not won at Texas is our race leader, Jeff Gordon. Yeah, and I, and I really don't see, unless Mark's been saving a whole lot, I don't see anybody having a whole lot for Jeff Gordon, to tell you the truth. He's had the best car all day, other than that period of time when uh, Dale Jr. was better than him. 12 races, 12 different faces of victory lane. Our DL field of a picture can gives you the restart. We're back under green. A little crowded there in turn one. <laughs> Three wide. David Gilliland, he just uh, got sandwiched. But I think Matt Kenseth in that 17 car knows if he wants to get up there and race with Jeff Gordon, he needs to get it done early. He just drives by Mark Martin in the 01 car. And here comes Jeff Burton trying to battle, but he's got nowhere to go. Trying to get Mark Martin. But this is a classic 17 race. Same thing he did yesterday. Dick. Well, Mark Martin has bragged all year long about his pit crew and pit strategy as well he might, Mark, because on the last stop, he picked up a spot to stop before that. He picked up two spots. Mark right now has had top five finishes in all but one of the races he has started, and every time he gets out of the car, he'll tell you the pit crew is responsible. They definitely, they get the job done every time he comes to pit road. I think the performance of that car, it's just now starting to show up that they have great pit stops. Larry, I tell you, I like what I'm seeing. Now that yellow car running in the second place, he hadn't shown that much speed all day long. Jeff Gordon's been better, but uh, right now that 17 is hanging with him. Fourth place battle here. Biffle has passed. Burton, another couple of ex-teammates at Roush Racing. Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s car has been retired from the race. Third DNF of 2007 for Jr. I tell you what, I can't say enough about this Hall of Fame racing. Tony Raines and this DLP HD TV been on the lead lap all day long, by far looking at their best run of the season, sitting there in 12th position right now. Had a boy for Raines, for Brian Vickers with the Toyota. When they've made the race, they've run well, and he's on the lead lap. Yep. Vickers crew chief, you know, Doug Richard, he's won this race yep. with Greg Biffle, so uh, they've run very well. Now this is a battle for the seventh position. Juan Pablo Montoya in the 42 car, Jamie McMurray in that 26. Going at it right here with 33 laps to go. Now we do need to update you on Kurt Busch, that situation. You mentioned, Mike, he got the free pass. There they, you go. They Still elected down. to stay out, but regardless, the rule is when you get the free pass, you start the restart the race at the tail end of the longest line. So Bush started 14th, restarted 14th, he has gained one position. Dick Bergman. And Junior joins an all-star junkyard here in the garage area. How big a heartbreak is this? Oh, it's not that big. We had a great race car. I'm proud of my team, all the guys at the shop. Should be really, really proud of the car that they brought to the racetrack. Uh, the motor was fantastic. Um, I might have beat on the motor a little bit on the restarts. Uh, I spun the tires in second gear, so I would turn a little bit more RPMs in third, trying to maximize what I could get there. Uh, but normally when you when you tear a car up and spin around stuff, you can, you can roll the motor backwards and, and do some damage there, and that's my, that's probably what happened. But everybody should be really happy at DEI. We had a really, really fast car. We just haven't had any luck, and one of these days it'll, it'll be our day, and we'll be able to celebrate. And there's uh, We just got to keep our heads up while we got this momentum. We got these kind of great cars. Keep your head up and take advantage of each weekend. Well, you had the red shirts of the grandstand on their feet for a good while this afternoon. Congratulations on a good run. And guys, what I'm hearing in this interview right there as we watch the battle for third between Mark Martin and Greg Biffle, is you look at the first five races of this year, he only led one lap. Then he led 137 at Martinsville. He led 96 today, two different cars. He has confidence over what that team's doing. Well, yeah, and you want the driver. He's got to be the cheerleader. He's up, team's up. And right now, it sounds like Junior is up. And earlier this year, he'd been saying, we don't have the parts and pieces. We don't have the resources we need. Today, he did. Brian Vickers in the 83, still on the lead lap, running in 14th, man. Solid and impressive run for Vickers and this new team. What he's hoping for now is that we see the green flag 
stay to the checkers. The reason he's lost the clutch, he was just hoping not to get run over on that last restart. Right now, running in 14th and just hoping to bring home a top 15 for this 83 team. Matt Kenseth has radioed concern about his right rear tire, Dick. And that's the second time today he has radioed that concern. So crew chief Robbie Reiser said better make sure this time because the first time he thought it was going down. In fact, the right rear tire was just fine. But this time, Kenseth seems more certain than before that he has a tire losing air and it's the right rear. I just go back to yesterday. He was running along. He had a right rear tire that he thought was going down and the tire blew out and he spun and almost hit the wall. That was a way. I'd say he's a little gun shy. I think, think I think he's uh, yeah, I think he's probably feeling things that maybe aren't there. That's Nextel helping NASCAR and NASCAR fans get things done. Who gets our Nextel getting it done call of the race. Well, you know, I, I think that you got to give it to uh, you were going to say the two car, right? Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of like Mark Martin. I like the job he's done today. And that, uh, like you said, that crew. Yeah, I, I'm going to go maybe not a call of the race. I'm going to go a call of the weekend. Kurt Busch, that two car, they're here without their crew chief, Roy McCauley, who's home with his wife, Amy. They crashed in practice. They unloaded a backup car. They led this race and had it not been for that caution back on lap 292. They obviously all weekend long, like next day, they've been getting it done. I'm going to go with Montoya. He and David Stremmies battled his teammate much of the day, but Montoya made that rookie mistake getting in the left side of his pit box. But every time they told him leaders come and you got to push the button, he has. He's responded, kept uh, this number 42 not just on the lead lap, but in a position to where he might just get his second top five finish of the year. Good call. Not sure Tony would agree, but uh, <laughs> good call. 12 drivers make the chase for the next Tell Cup. Montoya came in here 16th in points. Right now he is 13th. 14 points back of Mark Martin. This is the first racetrack we've been to that he's actually raced on before. He ran the Bush Series race here back in the fall. Every other racetrack, he's had to look at a map just to see where it's located almost. <laughs> did Jeff Gordon get in the wall again? Well, let's see. Oh, yeah. Rick Biffle just did. Well, the whole. The whole right side of the 24 car is scraped wow. up big time. Boy, turn four has been busy today. Cars just won't turn off that corner. Late in the race, slick. Steve? Yeah, I want to add to what DW said. Uh, it was like all of a sudden, Daryl, he said, I don't know what happened. I just got big time tight. Next thing I knew, I was in the wall. I, 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 what little I've driven here through the years, uh, that's what this joint does. Got the wheels turned, you're coming off the corner, everything's fine. Lose got all the grip all at once. And the thing I'm seeing right now as we see this battle between Jeff Burton and Mark Martin for fourth is right now Jeff Gordon, our leader, he's about the slowest of the top 10 or 12 cars as far as lap times. And you can see that 17 car just reeling him in slowly but surely, 22 laps to go. Yeah, it damaged that. That, that car hit the wall hard. I look at the right side when he went by, and the right side tires are all scuffed up, and the body's all banged in. That's a pretty hard lick there, boys. I'm sure it's, it affected the right front fender, plus his looks more likely bent the toe, and the car's just not driving like he wants it to now by any way, by any means. And Matt Kenseth really got through one and two good that last time. You can see he's about a car length behind Jeff Gordon in the 24 car. Well, uh, Matt may just have himself a sweep. Be the second one of the year for him. Did it at Fontana. Kevin Harvick did it today, Tone. It seems to be the nature of the beast. And he just turns to the bottom here through one and two. And he'll take the lead coming off two, going down the back straightaway. Gordon's got to be fight careful. Got to be careful right there, man. You get under the car on the outside of you. That's Jeff Gordon's car on the outside. I'm telling you. And here's third place, Jeff Burton coming back after Greg Biffle. Two Chevys, two Fords fight for the front four spots. This track gets so slick and you lose so much grip late in the race on corner exit. That's exactly what happened. It's what happened to Tony when he wrecked. 
Almost happened to uh, Matt Kenseth right there. He'll have to set Jeff up and get him in a different spot. Because Jeff's definitely a setting duck right now. What about Kenseth and that tire, Dick? Well, Kenseth just came back on the radio, Mike, and said, I'm telling you, that right rear has a leak. So <laughs> Kenseth in second spot, possible tire going down. Right now, we're going to have 18 laps to go as they come to the strike. There you see the battle on the right-hand side of your screen. That's a battle for the seventh position. I just believe they run so much right rear spring in these cars here to make them turn that it makes that right rear feel like it's going away sometime. Now, Greg Biffle, we saw him slap the wall coming out of turn four. Mark Martin passed Biffle. Uh, Mark Martin passing him right now. Jeff Burton passed him, and Mark goes by as Kenseth has a look at the lead. Yeah, this is and the way. Gordon gives him room. This is the way to do it here now. You get on the outside. And you should be able to carry that momentum off of turn two, just like we saw Jeff Gordon do earlier. There you see Kenseth's able to get in the gas, stay in the gas, and he'll take, take the lead. We got battles all over the place. Had the eighth place battle upper right, where Martin Truex passes David Stremme. And on the left, Mark Martin has gone by Greg Biffle. That's for fourth. Now, and between those two battles on top is Montoya. And uh, Jeff Burton is about to catch him. I think Jeff Burton is somebody that Matt Kenseth may have to worry about before this thing ends. I think you're right. Well, when I look at the lap times, there's no question. Jeff Burton, that 31 car with 16 to go, he's got the fastest car on the track right now. There's Burton. 1.3 seconds back of the leader. And closing fast. And Denny Hamlin, after fighting for 200 some laps to get back on the lead lap, he's now battling David Stremme for ninth. But you know, Daryl, I can't help but think about, and you talked about this in the pre race. Jeff Burton, a thinking man's race. He was, I think he was conserving his race car, saving it. He knew he wanted to be here for the end of this thing. Just keep those guys in sight. Uh, Jeff Burton, somebody you never want to, you always want to remember he's still on the, when he's still on the racetrack, he's still got a chance to win. You see right now, he's on the back bumper of Jeff Gordon. These two guys are having a pretty good go of it here for ninth and 10th. Give a call to Stremme. He's about to get his first career top 10 finish in his 45th Nextel Cup start. Well, Denny Hamlin is going to knock him back to the 10th position in the 11 car working on him as they go down the back straightaway. There'll be 13 to go next time. Here comes Jeff Burton in that 31 car drove to the bottom of that racetrack. He takes second place away from Gordon. Got a sight buddy, set on Matt Kenseth. Time to run it down. Let's go. You know, this kind of is reminiscent of Dover last year when Burton and Kenseth uh, had such a great battle. Burton finally put the move on Kenseth to win the race. I think he may be able to do it again today. Jeff Burton this year has finishes a third, fourth, 15th at Vegas, his worst, fourth, second, and sixth. Everything but a W, and he is three car lengths back of Matt Kenseth for that. And just think about his teammates. They have had a terrible day, and here this 31 car is Richard Childress' car, right up there, set, poised to win this race. And Mike, you were talking earlier, we've been talking all day long, 12 races, 12 different winners. Jeff Burton in the 31 car, he won the very first Texas race in 1997. In fact, it was his first career win. It looks like Matt Kenseth right now is set to try to keep that car on the bottom. You can see Jeff Burton on the 31 starting to work the high side. But I, I just I know I keep referring to yesterday, but Kenseth was in the same battle yesterday with Denny Hamlin and Kenseth made the pass on the outside, but then he had to go to the inside to block and he ended up making the finish in the race on the outside because Hamlin couldn't make the pass on the inside. So where do you want to be? I want to be on the outside. You saw what happened to him over there, right? Of course, Jeff Burton is so quick through the center of the corner if he ever gets position. But man, that's the hard thing is get that position to clear that car and move up in front of him. Yeah, he could now, not complete the pass at either end being on the bottom of the racetrack. You here's just one be. for the, you won't believe this. The five car is back on track. After Kyle being Bush. involved in that crash, the driver is Dale Earnhardt Jr. <laughs> that's interesting. It sure is. 
Kyle apparently had left the racetrack thinking the car had been withdrawn. We're not sure of that. We're making that assumption. They needed a driver, and there was Junior. We've got a battle for third here between Jeff Gordon, Mark Martin, and that 01 car. But while we're watching that battle, Jeff Burton just lost a lot of ground off turn four, but he's fighting back over there in turn one and two. There you see the battle on the left. The eight to go next time to the line. I think Kent is having to do what he was going to save for late for these last few laps. Move up the racetrack because you can't make that pass on the bottom. We saw that over there just a moment ago, although Mark Martin slides right on past Jeff. Uh, Jeff Gordon there. Well, true grit. Mark Martin takes over third place as Gordon pedals it just a bit. And you know, we talk about points. This is important for the again race for again racing the owner of this car because he's six in owner points. Kent's with a little wobble and Burton a bigger wobble coming off turn two. That's happened twice in the last two laps. Once in turn four, once in turn two. Kent says he got to be careful not get too high up that hill. But as long as he runs that high line like that, I don't believe Burton can get him. Jeff Burton's wife, Kim, looking on. Charting the laps from the pit box, as many of the driver's wives do. You know why? It keeps them involved. It keeps them from sitting over in the motor coach worrying themselves to death. She's got a headset on. She knows what's going on. Robbie Reiser, Jack Roush. As the laps wind down, Kenseth up the hill just a bit, way up the hill. Yeah, that's a little bit too high up the hill right there. Burton closes right back up. Six to go. Kenseth has had two nail biters uh, in the last two days, I can tell you. He was in this same battle yesterday. They have a pretty clean racetrack in front of them, and you just see he's starting to continue to work that high side. Burton can get there in the middle of the corner, but he can't complete the pass on the exit. I believe if Burton could get, he gets through the center right here. Watch him. He's going to close, 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 but then the momentum of that high line, and Kenseth's able to pull off. It's seventh place battle on the right. Martin Truex keeps digging. Oh, Montoya slides it. He's not going to get position. Up. Yeah, Martin, Martin was very kind to him there. Gave him a lot of room. I think this is cat and mouse in the front right here, though. Uh, and you see it again, the one car on the bottom, he can't quite complete the pass on Juan Montoya. Same thing down here with our leaders. You just can't quite, quite complete that pass when you're stuck on the bottom like that. Well, I know what, with four to go, it looks like it's uh, getting ready for one of these classic Texas finish here. Well, it's not the OK Corral, but it's pretty close. <laughs> Denny Hamlin in the midst of that battle for seventh as well. Here comes Burton again. Whoa, He's really going to have to get aggressive I tell you, to though, draw even with Kenseth. Yeah, but Kenseth got up the hill a little too far. But he's able to pull it down and come off ahead of her. Three to go. Three to go. I tell you, you got to be careful not get up there too high. <laughs> I think Kim Burton, she's forgot about keeping up with laps. She knows there's three to go. Burton got a pretty good yep. run there. He got to the door. Yeah, he's at. Now, this could be the. He could make it this time. He got to Ken's this door, but couldn't draw he, fully he, alongside. He could make it this time because he got enough run on him. Going to take a pretty good effort right here for Kenseth to hold him down. Might have to get a little physical here. Nah, he's not going to do it. Yes, he is. They'll be side by side. Two to go. It's, if he can inch up there like that, I'm telling you, he could get it done because that center of the corner right there, if he could just gas it up a little harder. Daryl, he is driving that thing down in the corner right now. Lap and a half to go halfway down the back straightaway. <laughs> you heard how much he feathered oh, yeah. the throttle to stay off of Kenseth. You know, Burton's got to be thinking, more. how many times am I going to find myself in this position? Oh, well, about twice more. That's how many laps to go. Lap and a half. Burton, the leader here. Kenseth has the drive off the corner. And side at the white side. flag, it's Kenseth. One Yeehaw. lap to go. This is it, boys. Can he do it? Burton on the inside. Kenseth on the outside. Burton, That's man. as far as he's been. He got him. He got him. He got him. He got him. Clear, clear, clear. He got him. He got him. Yeah. Yeah. Bring her home. He got him now. Kenseth got into the this up a little too high off of two. Be smooth, man. Be smooth. He's going to get a run off. It's all yours. Bring yeah. home. Jeff Burton comes off the corner. Jeff Burton, the first repeat winner in Texas Motor Speedway. Winning the Samsung 500 after a fierce duel with former teammate Matt Kenseth.
And Jamie McMurray got his teammate Greg Biffle there at the by line to finish fifth. By an inch. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. He just barely slipped by him. That's a great job on Burton ought to just be absolutely great job, elated. Jeff. Good. Well, he and Kenseth both. Kenseth for trusting that car when he thought he had a problem, and he about drove the wheels off it trying to hold Jeff Burton at bay. Well, you know what, boys? Jeff Burton's teammate yesterday morning, Clint Boyer, told the three of us, my teammate is driving as hard as he can every lap. Not that I doubted it, but I'm a believer now. I guarantee you. And you know what? It just goes yeah, back Burton, to I think about job, Bristol and how job. clean he drove against Kyle Busch at Bristol. And thank you guys for giving me good equipment. <laughs> Same thing today. Clean race, got it done. You know, he just was uh, honored here the other night for the Sportsman of the Year Award, and he deserves it. He raced Matt Kenseth cleanly, and is going to bring the Prilosec car to victory lane. Whew. I'm hey, some... way to go, moneymaker. I'm going to need some Prilosec you after that. <laughs> Chevrolet congratulates Chevy driver Jeff Burton, winner of today's race from Chevy, an American Revolution. For Burton, first win since Dover in September, and his very first win, as we've told you earlier, came in April 1997, right here in and the inaugural race. And you know who he beat to win that race at Dover? Oh, Matt Kenseth. Matt Kenseth. There's the winning pass. Jeff Burton will head to victory lane. Welcome back to Texas, where 200,000 people have watched Jeff Burton score his 19th career Nextel Cup win and his second for car owner Richard Childress. Chris Devote is in victory lane. The streak has ended. Our first multiple winner at Texas Motor Speedway. And the guy who won the very first race here, the inaugural race, is the one to do it. It's a new streak now starting for Jeff Burton. As he climbs down from his number 31, what a classic battle there between you and one of your former teammates, Matt Kenseth. Can you talk about that finish? Matt's a, Matt's a hell of a driver. We were quite a bit faster than he was, and you know he held me off for 15 laps or whatever. I mean, he just, just that's just how good he is. Uh, my guys did a great job all day. We, uh, we were really good on long runs. We get beat up on short runs, and we got just what we needed. We got a long run, and it uh, worked out for us. You've been so consistent all year, but you haven't been to victory lane. Obviously, a great feeling for your team. Does this a sign, too, that you guys obviously a championship contender even this early in the season? Well, it's a long year and a long way to go. And uh, certainly we've done a nice job to this point, but uh, there's a lot of work ahead of us. And, um, you know, we got to go to work again next week. This is a, a long year, but uh, I'll go to battle with this team and, uh, you know, give, take my best shot with it. He's going to take his best shot. As we said, he won the very first race. He gets a congratulatory kiss. He has now won the most recent at Texas. Mike Joy. Jeff Burton led one lap today, the money lap. <laughs> that's amazing. And that's what I love about our sport. You know, you got guys that lead a lot of laps and guys that run up front. But these two guys here at the end, Burton and Kenseth, they put on the show and they went home with the check. Just a couple of notables. Mark Martin finishes third. He's picked up right where he left off before taking those two weeks off. Jamie McMurray gets his top first top five in a while. And you mentioned it before the race was over. David, David Strimmy gets his first career top 10 finish by finishing 10. Yeah, Kurt Busch got back to 11th. And of course, uh, Brian Becker's third in, in the Toyota. He's 14th. That was a good job on those guys' part. And a tough day for Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jimmy Johnson, and others who ended up in the garage area and way deep in the points today. Matt Yoakum is with today's runner-up. Shades of a great battle from Dover one year ago between Burton and Kansas. Let's talk about the last lap. Sum it up from your side as far as him making your move, you make, you trying to make your move as well. <laughs> well, it stunk from my vantage point, but yeah, Jeff's a great friend of mine. He did a great job. You know, there's uh, nobody more deserving than him, but uh, it's uh, it's painful losing on the last lap, but we really didn't have a car that could contend all day, and, uh, you know, through hard work, adjustments, great pit stops by these guys, they uh, they gave me a shot to win, and that's all I can ask for. Uh, I hate I hate I lost it for him, but uh, if I had to go do it again, I would have got beat the same way. I couldn't have done anything more except for wreck. so uh, we got into one, and he just backed the corner up like he needed to and got to the throttle real early, and I got to the gas at the same time, but 
uh, I started pushing and started spinning, and I almost took the wall down off of two, so I just, uh, I just couldn't get it done. Still a great weekend for Matt Kenseth, a first and a second here in Texas. Well, Jeff Gordon talking to Steve Latardis, crew chief, and uh, Jeff, it wasn't a win, but my gosh, you guys battled all day. We did. Uh, you know, I'm really proud of this DuPont Chevrolet team because they've just been bringing awesome race cars to the track. They're an awesome team, and they proved that, you know, again today. But, man, I'm just sick, you know. I don't want to give races away. And I uh, felt like we had the car to beat there, and, you know, I was getting a little bit tight. Just come off of turn four, and the thing just went right in the wall. I mean, I, I had been, you know, running closer, but it just took off for no reason. So, hey, uh, I still uh, take the credit for it. You know, we should have won this race, another Texas race getting away from us, and we don't we don't get opportunities at this place very often. So, still all in all, a good day to, to, to finish where we did. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Okay, third today, second, two-fifths and a tenth. What a year so far. Is this cars, driver, pit crew, what is it? Man, it's a, it's a crew. Uh, I just want to, man, I'd love to won that for our soldiers out there, uh, everybody that's defending this country uh, all over all over the world. And uh, we really appreciate them. Uh, this team is awesome. They're the best I've ever worked with. I love these guys. The car was good. The uh, closer we got to the front, uh, the better it got. They made it better. About halfway through the race, we stopped adjusting on it and just, uh, you know, just made it go. Uh, Guys, I love working with these guys, man. They're just the best. Well, they love working with their driver, too, because when he got out of the car, the crew just threw their arms around him and gave their driver a big hug. And you deserved it, my friend. <laughs> Thanks, Dick. A lot of years of racing right there. Mark Martin seems happier in semi-retirement. Good finish for him as Jeff Burton. Look at our top ten unofficial results. Juan Pablo Montoya, the rookie, finishing eighth, but having a big effect. That wreck with Tony Stewart, and then later, and the way it affected Dale Earnhardt Jr. with Kyle Busch when he was spinning. So after seven races of 36, Jeff Gordon maintains the points lead. Chase for the uh, Nextel Cup of Jeff Burton with the win today, closing fast. Well, you take a look at guys like Denny Hamlin right now in fifth place in the points. That team rallied back to me in a lap down most of the afternoon to get a top 10 finish and keep that fifth place posi position. The Rick Hendrick racing streak snapped to Hendrick Motorsports at four. Richard Childress racing with Jeff Burton winning this race today. But Chevrolet, they've won the last five races. They are clearly dominating this season. They're definitely dominating this season. And the key thing is right now, they still got that R07 engine that is still just kind of like in its uh, infancy. So I think they're going to get stronger as the year goes on. I think NASCAR may have to take a look at that. All right, don't forget next Saturday, it's rivalry day. Baseball, a big day on Fox Sports. It starts with Major League Baseball. 330 Eastern, 1230 Pacific, Yankees, Red Sox, or Cubs, Cardinals, and the rivalry goes to the racetrack that night from Phoenix at 8 o'clock uh, Eastern as we will bring you that race. Remember uh, Kurt Busch, uh, who led today for a while. Remember he had a run-in with the law when he was in Phoenix. The sheriff there, they made uh, Kurt an honorary deputy. and <laughs> hey, so If you can't beat him, join him. <laughs> and, and, sh and the sheriff is going to be in the pace car next week mm -hmm. for that race that you'll see 8 o'clock Eastern. Speaking of who's in which car, how about Dale Earnhardt Jr. in for the five-car ride at the end of the race? Yeah, well, that's not unusual. Sometimes when drivers get, you know, heat stroke or just get a little fatigued, they'll go and get another driver, and it looks like Kyle had left the racetrack, so he got in there and helped his buddy out. A season of dramatic finishes oh so close on Fox so far. What will it be next weekend? Tune in and find out. Don't forget the action drama series Drive later tonight on Fox. It's Prison Break on Wheels. For Jeff Hammond and our entire crew, Jeff Burton, the man in Texas. We'll see you later. Thanks for watching NASCAR on Fox.